Hello everyone, and welcome to Proxima's Ani What Ifs. What Ifs, so we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto awakens 10,000 years old sealed power. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. Naruto stared at the oversized beast, sighing as Kurama contacted Jaiwuki, allowing Naruto and Killerb to communicate as well. I have a plan to stop all the Biju from ever being used again, but you guys will have to say goodbye to one another. He smiled. I personally think number 8 deserves a bit of a vacation. Naruto smiled as both Biju stared at the blonde's plan. The Kashi and Guy both watched as the giant ten-tailed Biju was waking, then stare in shock as Naruto began his own hand signs, and stare in confusion as reddish blue chains extended from the seal on his stomach, attaching them to the King of Hell statue, connecting to the eyes. Genryu Kaiu Fuijin. The Kashi stared in shock at what his student was doing, as Guy didn't look too much into seals, he was at a bit of a loss, be reverting from his Biju mode, willingly giving large sums of Jaiwuki's chakra to aid Naruto and Kurama with absorbing the other seven Biju. Madara stared intrigued by what the blonde was attempting, though he was curious about how he learned the sealing method of the Akatsuki. The four started at the beginning, with Shukaku, the raccoon dog screaming at them the entire time, but was easily removed from the statue when faced against the two top biju. Matatabi following soon after as she actually trying to help them by pushing against the statue's hold on her, her Jinchiriki being able to rest knowing her biju was saved. Asabu also working with them, though now Madara actually saw what the blonde was doing and tried to stop him, only to be stopped due to the wall of sand that stopped the black flames of Amaterasu. Sun Gakyu fraud against the statue as the growing opposing side tried to pull him out, Madara steadily growing more desperate, tried using his Sharingan to pull back on the demons, only for him to have further trouble, since he was fighting the pull of four Biju and two Jinchuriki. Akiwu smiled as he was pulled from his prison, Madara staring in shock as the moon flew further away, as he instead went back to attacking Naruto, this time lava blocking his Mokuten. Seiken was next to be drawn upon, as sand crawled along the chains to stop Madara, as he launched his black flames at them, only for him to have to retreat from his position as lava scorched the shoulder, said Ichiha was standing on. Taomei felt the pull of the technique and followed its brethren towards Naruto, as Madara threw caution to the wind as he rushed Naruto. Naruto smirked as he stared Madara down and smiled as he felt the pull on the partial of Jaiwuki's chakra enter his seal, along with finding the source of Kurama's and pulling out both the brothers. Kurama watched as the two brothers entered the mindscape, only for them to be killed by being squashed by all nine Biju, allowing Kurama to get his chakra back from them. He smiled as he saw his friend appear next to the sage weapons. Madara was shocked as he found himself staring down at a Biju bomb, formed of the power of all nine Biju, strength to match the Juubi. Madara stared in shock as the blast came at him as he threw everything he had at it, nothing affecting it, and never having learned a technique of transport, considering how he never had to use hit and run tactics, he is Madara fucking at Chihad, damn it. He watched as he was met with death. Abito stared in shock as all his plans were destroyed, only to turn on Kakashi as he felt himself pierced by enlightening covered fist. He felt as a large amount of Jaiwuki's chakra was no longer in him, but he felt the Bijuu's presence still within him. Naruto smiled at B. Looks like Jaiwuki gets to stay chillin' with you, right B? Naruto raised his fist for a fist bump, which B returned with a wide smile of his own. It appears we stopped his gears and saved the world for all the little dudes and ladies. Naruto smiled, though he didn't stand for long when he was tackled by a blue-haired maiden as she cried into his chest. Sometime later, after all the celebrating, at a meeting with the five cage. Naruto stared as the five cages decided among themselves what was going to happen, be right next to him, though Naruto knew his sensei would be dancing with Hiruzen over his dream becoming real. A smiled warmly at Naruto. Well, looks like my trust was placed well, though you and B saved the world by unknown means, which means we have to ask what happened. Naruto smiled as he began the explanation. I used the sealing technique that Akatsuki used to absorb the Biju from the Jinchuriki, and B and Jaiwuki helped me and Kurama, I trusted Kurama to pull out the weakest of the Biju, while well, all four of us pulled, and as we pulled them out, the Biju defended us when needed and helped pull when they didn't have to, but Jaiwuki used so much chakra helping me, he got absorbed into the seal as well. But B retained enough Biju chakra to stay stable without the Biju. The five cage were in shock, Inoki asking. How did you learn that technique? Naruto looked at B as he explained. I actually taught it to him, after witnessing them using it on my shadow clone, I powered with eight's tentacle when the Achiha brat caught me. They would have seen through it if I had not done so. I looked at his brother. No rhymes. Too tired to think of any bro, give me a night of R&R, &R, and I'll be right as rain, yeah. Naruto chuckled. 
losing as much chakra as you did, I'm not surprised you aren't asleep on your feet. The five cage smiled at them, Tsunade speaking up. Well, you two go rest up, I am sure there are people you would just love to visit. Both Jinchuriki left, leaving the five cage to speak about their plans for the future. After the private party for the two heroes. Naruto smiled as he walked out of the building they claimed for their celebrations, with a nearly permanent blush, especially considering how much hugging he got from Kerry and her team for saving her, even after admitting it was an accident. Hinata had followed behind Naruto and stepped beside him as he stopped to look over the edge of the cliff he was on, them being somewhere in the middle of lightning country. So, what will happen now? Naruto smiled at her. Well, Sasuke is still lost, so my first stop is to guide him to the light, I also have to figure out about my new powers. Hinata looked at Naruto with sadness in her eyes, but support in her voice. Well, good luck Narutokan. Hinata turned around to walk back, only to stop as she felt arms wrap around her. I also want to give us a chance. You deserve it after all you have done for me. Hinata smiled as she cried tears of joy and turned in his arms to hug him back. As the two stood there holding one another, neither sensed the attack till it was too late, as a long sword was stabbed through Naruto's back and through them both. Orochimaru stood behind Naruto, hands still on the handle of his Kusanagi sword. I hope you don't take this personally, but if I ever want any hope of winning, I need to eliminate you. Orochimaru smirked as several clones appeared and draw out a strange unknown seal around the three, Hinata's and his blood leaking down, covering the seal. You both will power this seal with your blood, and you shall be sealed for all eternity. The last thing Naruto saw was Hinata's pain-filled eyes and Sasu coming to his rescue before all went black. Sasu glared at Orochimaru as they began their battle, Jugo checked on Naruto and Hinata. The blonde is stuck within a prison and the girl is dying, being drained to power the seal. Sajetsu stood there drinking water as he spoke up. I believe I have every right to say I told you so right about now. Everyone heard the battle as they rushed towards them, only for Jugo and Sajetsu to nearly shit themselves, backing away from the statue and dead girl. Orochimaru actually felt fear, only to widen his eyes at what he saw when he turned around, Sasuke pointing at Orochimaru when every living legend, including the five cage were glaring at them. The Kashi looked over the seal that was around Naruto and Hinata. From what I see, this seal is a bit better from when he placed the Gaju Fuijin on Naruto, this one appears to be drawing on power from both kids, there is no way to break this from the outside, Naruto could overpower it, but with his recent power boost, he can't control his power enough to break out. He rushed right at Orochimaru and didn't let up, and joined his brother as Sasu continued attacking Orochimaru, Tsunade, Shizun, and Sakura went to work on the stabbed teens, Hinata being healed and removed from Naruto's arms, though the poison still affecting her, Tsunade being the best, and with help from both of her apprentices, managed to help her. Orochimaru smirked as he spoke loud enough to them, causing his three opponents to pause. Naruto is the one powering it, the Hyuga's blood was just used to drain her chakra, adding in her power as well, which means in order to escape, Naruto requires to overpower her, himself, as well as me. Only a blast with that amount of power would be enough to escape, and considering he himself was just drained of all his chakra to form the seal, means he doesn't even have the power needed to use his Biju power. Orochimaru couldn't help but smirk as he opened his mouth wide, his snake form shooting out, allowing him to slither away at extreme speeds and into one of his escape routes. The Shinobi Alliance all glared at the hole, none being dumb enough to give chase, several thoughts of whether Naruto would be dumb enough to give chase going through their heads. Sasu looked at Hinata. I removed the poison from his sword, so you don't have to worry about that. I had no idea this would happen, I thought he was going to go into hiding when he used Anko's seal to come back. Anko walked from the tree line, glaring at where Orochimaru left to. What happened mighty Ichiha, I thought you were going to kill him. Sasuke looked down as he closed his eyes. I got answers, some were hard to listen to, but I understood what happened, I came to beg for my brother's forgiveness, and yet now he won't be able to escape from that till it's all over. If you end the alliance before we kill Orochimaru, we will have to deal with another Madara incident, so I am going to hunt down that snake. Tsunade shouted at Sasuke. Bring that traitor's head to us and you will get a fair trial, you can even pick your lawyer. Sasuke looked at everyone before him and just sweat dropped, wondering who would try to help him, everyone hated him for what he did, his only hope for a chance at redemption was a statue. If you kill Orochimaru for what he did, I will defend you. Everyone looked at the crying Hayuga. Hinata was looking at Sasuke with the darkest look anyone has ever seen on her. Sasuke walked away, with Yugo and Sajetsu following. Inside Naruto's mind. Naruto was sitting on a small island, in the middle of nine larger islands, the Bijuu on the islands, Jaiwukis with a giant chakra cloud floating above it, the Bijuu standing in a circle, from one tail to nine in a clockwise fashion. So, any ideas on what to do? Hirama sighed. 
just focus on controlling our chakra, by time you absorb the power, you should have escaped, though it's anyone's guess how long it will take. What do you mean by that? Chukaku, whom trusted his brethren, spoke to answer. What Karama means, is that how long it takes for you to absorb our power, starting with me, depends on your current power, though our chakra is all that you'll get, so you're stuck with at least eight voices in your head, depending on if Jaiwuki's Jinchuriki dies before you escape. Naruto sighed as he began to sift through using Shikaku's power. Sometime through the process however, Jaiwuki appeared, and he appeared sad, Matatabi asking what was on their minds. So, what has been going on while we sit in our new prison? Jaiwuki sighs as he looks sadly at Naruto, answering the question he knew he was going to ask. Your friends are all fine and safe, B just died of old age, and thanks to your friend Sasuke, Orochimaru was slain, peace has prevailed for the last 70 years. They moved you to the mausoleum your parents were buried in. That girl Hinata took care of your petrified form for her entire life, she loved you till death, B visited her several times. She lived with Niji and his wife, Lee married Tenten, I believe her name was, Lee enjoyed challenging B of course Hinata never truly moved on, she never left your grave and made sure your statue stayed clean. The rest of your friends I don't have much knowledge of, Hinata was the one B visited the most due to always having to go through her to visit you. The priestess Shan was there on occasion. Tsunade had some semen samples of yours, allowing you to keep your promise to her, Hinata also persisted in having your child. So you're stuck with two children. Both actually healthy baby girls, B met them when Shion brought Moroku, who she said she named after her mother, to meet her father, the hero of the United Shinobi Nations, and Hinata and Kashina, who Hinata named after your mother, were there every time B visited. But everyone you know is dead and lived happy lives, Hinata even left a journal right next to your statue, at your feet, in a trunk, sealed with Kashina's blood, so you should be able to open it when you awaken. B asked when he visited recently, she said it was a time capsule for when you escaped, and no matter who said what, she always stated when, and when someone said if, she whacked them with her cane. Naruto was crying after Jaiwuki finished, but knew he could do nothing, and it was too late to do anything. Jaiwuki decided to finish up with the more serious explanations. They found that your seal is slowing your chakra replenishing rate, so it will be longer than normal for you to absorb our chakra, as well as you might be able to escape after you have absorbed Asabu, but it would be pushing it if you want to do it safely, then Sun Gaku is who you need to get to. The Bijuu actually shed tears for their new container. Knowing he would one day replace them as the mightiest of the beasts. Kurama decided to question about Naruto's plans. It is up to you Naruto, with how long it's taking you to absorb Shukaku's power, it may take hundreds, if not thousands of years for this to be over. Naruto looked at each of the Bijuu, staring each in the eye, before responding to Kurama's question. I will fully absorb you all, and allow you each to find peace in the next life, and I shall make sure the balance of this planet stays the way it is, and make sure peace will last. When I awaken, I will have plenty to fix, and a lot of places to bring peace to. The Sage of Six Paths shall awaken when he becomes what he stopped. The Bijuu all stared proudly at Naruto, all smiling as he went back to absorbing Shukaku. Ten thousand years later. The quake suddenly began as Yakai Academy was only one month away from opening. Under the school, a statue with a chest connected to it through the chains in which were covered in sealed tags. The statue opened its eyes as it stared at a realm it has no idea how long it went without seeing, and as he moved, the stone skin that covered him fell apart, while he noticed the quake he was causing with the amount of power he was releasing, so he controlled it into manageable levels and concealed it. The robed figure walked down a set of stairs and watched in shock as the statue he bought from a demon artifact auction, as it moved to the chest that came with it that no one could open. The blonde man turned to stare at him with blue eyes that glowed like his own white ones. Who are you? What are you doing in my mausoleum? Then Mei Mikagami stared for all of 10 seconds before responding. I am the one who bought the statue you just broke out of. My name is Tenmei Mikagami, what is yours? Naruto stared at the man. I was sold off. As in like a piece of furniture. The robed man nodded, actually smirking at the whole thing, finding it mildly amusing. I actually had to pay several thousand for you, almost six thousand to be exact. Naruto twitched. I, the mighty Jubi am only worth six thousand bucks. The man who brought peace to the known world, saved it from the previous Yuubi, along with the psycho who wanted to put everyone in an eternal illusion, and all you pay to get me and my worldly possessions is a measly 6,000. The headmaster of Yakai Academy, although shocked at his introduction, actually smirked. I guess I got more than I paid for. Naruto glared at the man before returning to his chest and opening it, surprising the headmaster, only for said headmaster to lose all excitement when all he saw were loads of scrolls, with the one to the right being the size of a torso, and on the left side being two piles of neatly stacked scrolls, of plenty of colors, each appearing to have names on them. 
Naruto decided to sit down and start reading, shoving the headmaster away with a power blast every time he tried to look at what was in the scroll, only for Naruto to throw a couple gems at him when he got tired of pushing him away as he yelled at him to go the fuck away. The headmaster sighed and pouted, deciding to take the gems and accept that the blonde bought himself from him. The robed man had visited several times, and every time, the man asked him questions, and every time Naruto threw not a gem, but a chunk of cement at him, telling him he didn't want to answer questions yet. The headmaster was getting frustrated. For the past week, he had been trying to learn more about the blonde that popped out of his statue, only for when he tried to read the scrolls that were in the chest to be swatted back, like some low-level yakai, and he was honestly getting tired of it. Then Mei was rightfully pissed off, the blonde was stronger than him and often called him a brat, and considering he was over a hundred years old and fraught against the great Alucard, he was being driven up the wall. And he was trying again today, after not getting anywhere for the past several, he was cautious about having someone like him wandering around, though the boy mostly stayed in the basement, he might walk out and cause trouble for him when it was most inopportune for him. Opening the door, the man just stared at his normal basement, which was filled with items he had bought from auctions and even eBay, but he was unable to find a certain blonde that had been occupying his thoughts. Best scores of the students. Naruto looked at the brunette who was whining about his bad scores, though they both noticed the three students all celebrating about their lower scores, which made both sweat drop. Mocha ran up to her brunette friend, noticing that there was a blonde who was standing next to him, both looking like they felt better on worse days. Tsukune actually took notice of the blonde, only for his thoughts to drift to his friend Mocha as he noticed her coming towards him. What none of them noticed were the stares Naruto was getting from the female population. Who's your friend Tsukune? Tsukune looked at the blonde that was looking at Mocha with surprise. I don't know, I just assumed he was a random student that actually agreed with me over something. Naruto sighed as he walked away from the two as they ended up shrugging and forgetting about him in favor of Mocha asking Tsukune to study with her. Naruto watched a young girl, watched the two from behind a pillar, as he noticed she was admiring the pink-haired girl, which got him thinking only for him to have to cover a nosebleed. Yukari's class president walked up to her, with his two groupies behind him. Well, Yukari, looks like you're the undisputed number one, guess someone knew what they were doing when they let you skip all those grades. Naruto stare in shock at the young girl, he knew women tended to be smarter than men, but that was ridiculous, she couldn't be more than 12, and everyone here appeared his age, if not older only for the girl to do something while he was distracted with his thoughts, causing three washpans to fall and bonk the three bullies on the head. Naruto actually chuckled at that, which when the three jerks heard it, got them even more pissed, though Yukari found it surprising someone else laughed at her bullies. Betting up and yelling at the girl, he went to attack her, which the pink-haired girl stepped in the way of. Back off, you shouldn't go around hitting girls. As the three looked like they were going to continue anyways, Naruto tapped his shoulder. Excuse me, but I couldn't help overhearing do you have a problem with this girl? The three bullies, after hearing that, thinking they had backup, turned to answer, only to get a look at the boy. Great, another boundary being, just what we need. Yukari looked surprised, while Tsukyun continued to look confused. Naruto looked shocked. Boundary being. The class president turned and walked away after realizing it was one boundary being helping another. Filthy witch, bad enough you're in our class, we better not have to deal with him too. Mocha and Yukari looked at Naruto with pity, as Tsukyun was still confused in the cafeteria. Yukari sat down with Mocha and Tsukyun on the other side of the table, Naruto right next to her. Naruto was still confused. What makes that guy call me a boundary being? Yukari sighed. It's your outfit, if it isn't the school uniform you must be a boundary being, but from your looks and physique, I would say you're a ninja. Tsukyun and Mocha were caught off guard, Naruto was confused. What does being a ninja have to do with boundary beings? Yukari gave Naruto a look, a look one would give a retarded child that asked a retarded question. Well, boundary beings are mixed into three categories, martial artist, ninja, and witch. All three have access to the same type of energy, where monsters have yakai, we have kai, and kai. Martial artists have more kai, allowing them to raise their physical prowess to unheard of levels, even matching that of some yakai. Witches on the other hand are the exact opposite, we have great amount of kai, which we use for our spells, and tends to allow us to become more intelligent. Ninja on the other hand, have equal amounts of both and are able to physically manifest spells without wands. Ninja are the most powerful of the three, but are also the most versatile, meaning they are the most annoying, martial artists stay near humans because everyone views them as humans who work out too much. Witches and ninja however are seen as not fully human due to our powers, but not seen as monsters due to being mostly human. Naruto nodded. So, what rank are we on the scale? Mocha smiled. Martial artists are not measured on the scale, witches are ranged from high C to low B, while ninja range from low to high B. 
Naruto looked insulted. I am a triple S rank threat, period. Yukari felt the boy was just upset over being told he wasn't the strongest and was just full of hot air. Yukari then became all shy. Well, since we answered stupid's questions. Mocha, to love you more than life itself. Yukari jumped across the table, hugging Mocha, though she ended up groping her. Every time I pass you in the hall I fall more and more in love with you, and after you rescued me from the bullies, I have decided you're the one. The one what? The one to be my girlfriend silly. Later that same day. Naruto was staring down the hooded guy again. What is it this time? Henmei was seriously ready to call in his two friends to help him in kicking this boy's ass. First he throws him out of his own damn basement, hits him with GEMS though he didn't complain, then started to hurl cement at him, before completely disappearing from his basement with no warning. You, ninja, are getting on my last nerve. Naruto smirked and released five tails of power, causing the headmaster and everyone else to seriously sweat from the amount of yakai he was releasing. This is 50%. So until you have three times the amount of power I am revealing, I don't want to hear your demands, but I could use help on learning about the world I woke up in, so can you help me in exchange for me leaving your school in one piece? Then Mei was sweating, even after the boy resealed his power, he would never forget the amount of power he felt, he nodded, not being able to speak, as the blonde walked away smiling, only for him to feel something in his pocket. You didn't have to threaten, I was going to try a peaceful solution anyway, but I was hoping I would have gotten more information about you, other than your name, Naruto. Naruto smirked. As a man of my word, I will start school tomorrow. Then Mei smirked as he caught the hopelessness in the blonde's eyes and voice, though he hid them well. Poggy Lake. Naruto stared at the surface, with a picture in his hand. The picture showed two beautiful women, one with blue hair and the other with pale blonde, both standing next to a statue, with two five-year-old girls hugging the statue's legs. The one next to Hinata had blue hair, his sky-blue eyes, and wore a red kimono, while the other girl had his sun-kissed blonde hair, while wearing an outfit similar to her mother's. Naruto dried his tears on his sleeve as he heard a scuffle. It hurts. It hurts it hurts, your voice is disgusting, why don't you go cry about it? Yep, disgusting is exactly right, it makes me sick. Naruto watched as the three bullies that picked on Yukari earlier in the day, while doing it again, they also transformed into lizardmen, confusing him somewhat before he remembered where he was. Well, 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 what have we here? All four of them turned to see Naruto standing there, still in his cloak, though Yukari noticed something, his sleeve was wet, like how her own look after she wipes her eyes after she cries. What do you want ninja? You're as filthy as her, though you are easier to deal with, at least you're not some whiny little prepubescent bitch like this boundary being is, so if you leave we won't have any problem with you, just keep your mouth shut and follow the rules. Naruto looked the thing dead in the eye for all of two seconds, before he burst out laughing, confusing and irritating all three of the lizardmen. What is so damn funny? Thinking I would follow the rules, after all, I am a prankster, so I will follow the rules while breaking everyone else's sanity, though now I have to get used to asking where your proof is. The lizardman snarled at Naruto as the one on the right rushed him ready to take a chomp out of him, only to fall forward as Naruto stepped aside. Never rush someone unless you're faster than them. As he finished his warning, he flicked the reptile in the back of his head. The other two snarled as they both joined their friend in rushing the blonde. Yukari was too shocked over the blonde helping her to realize she was left alone, she was also shocked that the blonde was messing with all three of the bullies who were going to eat her. Mocha stayed watching, not jumping in due to not wanting to distract the boundary being and getting him bit. Mocha. Naruto turned to look at the boy as he yelled, thinking there were more attacking, only for all three to sink their teeth into him, crony one biting his left forearm, crony two getting his right bicep, while the class rep got a hold of his left shoulder. Everyone looked on in shock at what just happened, Yukari beginning to cry, as Tsukun felt bad for distracting the other teen, Mocha herself turning to Tsukun in order for him to get a rosary off, who after getting grabbed by Mocha, yanked it off quickly. Mocha released a great amount of yakai, scaring the three lizardmen into releasing their prey, as he stood there with his head lowered. Must you call me out for every little thing? Can you not handle even these weaklings on your own? Tsukun looked shocked at her. But Mocha, those guys just bit that guy, he needs help and I am weak. Mocha just looked at the blonde as he took of his red cloak and examined the holes in it, which caused everyone, including the now arriving Kurumu, that there was no blood, just holes in his clothes. This was my favorite cloak, you pieces of shits. Naruto looked at the three lizardmen and released more yakai than Mocha, while his eyes turned red while his pupils became slits and his hair became spikier and his teeth became fangs. Tsukun looked shocked. Is he a vampire too? Mocha appeared intrigued. No, but he is very powerful. 
Naruto suddenly became three as he used the Shadow Clone, shocking everyone, but Yukari, as she knew the kind of things ninja were capable of, though to what extent Naruto was capable of she didn't know. Naruto and his two clones flashed in front of a lizard each as they each kicked them in the chin, then backhanded them as they came down. Yukari watched as Naruto batted the three bullies around and was in awe at what the boundary being was doing. Mocha watched, impressed with the blonde, even though the three lizardmen were pushovers compared to most, defeating one still required some amount of physical strength, though she was slightly disappointed when she remembered this whole kick their asses in three moves was because they put holes in his cloak. Kurumu actually looked a bit surprised over the amount of ease the ninja used to defeat the lizardmen, only to have her thoughts drift to other uses for the shadow clone technique and if Tsukun could use it. Naruto turned to look at them. Yo, what is it you're all doing here? Mocha is the one who answered. Well, they all rushed here to help Yukari out, well Tsukun released me in order to help you when you got bit. Naruto looked at the three weaker monsters. Those weaklings stood no chance, when someone who uses chakra trains enough, they are capable of creating a coat of energy on their body in order to protect them from harm, unless the opponent has enough physical strength or are able to overpower it with their own energy, yakai, chakra, kai, or kai, there will be no harm done to yourself. Everyone appeared fascinated by the ability. Mocha sighs as she snags her Rosario from Tsukun. Maybe next time I'll get to fight you. Mocha smirked at the blonde as she replaced her Rosario. Tsukun looked a bit jealous of Naruto there, especially since he has yet to earn inner Mocha's attention, only for protecting him as a food source for her outer self. Naruto watched as runes appeared slightly around the Rosario, though he was the only one to notice them, he still got good enough a look to know that the Rosario sealed her power away. Yukari looked at Naruto. Why did you rescue me? Mostly cause, I couldn't leave a young girl to suffer at the hands of complete morons. You do remind me a lot of myself when I was your age, pulling pranks to get attention, though I put graffiti all over the side of a mountain in the middle of broad daylight, wearing a neon orange jumpsuit. Everyone actually looked a bit shocked that a kid could pull that off, Yukari wasn't convinced. Ninja have their own villages, there is no way for you to know how I feel. Naruto went over and crouched down in front of her as he smiled. I lived in a village as an orphan, everyone but a handful of people believed I was a monster, I was told countless times my parents left me for random reasons, or they killed themselves, or my mother was a whore who couldn't take care of me. They tossed me out of stores, refused to sell me food at correct prices. I know what it means to be alone, and I know even more about how cruel humans can be. Yukari started to cry harder as she clung to Naruto's neck, knocking him over from his crouched position. Days later, Mocha and Kurumu were walking into class, only to find Naruto standing with Tsukun, while Yukari hung from Naruto's neck. Mocha and Kurumu stared in shock as Naruto spun around, causing the young witch to flop around, reminding Tsukun when he played Mario and used the cape. Mocha was the one to break the silence. What is going on here? As they stopped spinning, both with swirls in their eyes, Yukari answered. I have not given up on you Mocha, but I have also fallen in love with Naruto here, and it is now my goal to convince you Naruto is destined to be with us forever. As Yukari finished talking, Naruto fell over with Yukari on top of him, both still very dizzy. Another couple days skip. Naruto listened as Miss Nekunam was teaching, though when she asked Sukun to read a part, he didn't respond, even after calling his name a third time. What the hell am I supposed to do? Everyone stared at him in shock, except Naruto, almost as if he expected it. Miss Nekunam smiled. Read this next part silly. Later the same day. Naruto caught three guys all shouting about the three girls that he knew, and he felt himself get dumber after listening to their cheers about Mocha, Kurumu, and Yukari. What the hell? Only for Tsukun to cry as they all started hitting him with their plastic megaphones. They were all commenting on how he was a wimp, even though he was in his human form, when the trashed Tsukun had started to dump itself on them, leading to them all smiling and practically drooling over the three who came to rescue the boy. Hey, just because he's stealing Mocha from me and Naruto doesn't mean you should all gain up on him. Naruto had a sweat drop form after that. Well, considering they know they should fear me, they have no choice. All three of the boys looked to Naruto as they began to sweat, only for them to throw their megaphones at Naruto, all three being torn up before they reached their target. Kozo spoke out for them. Just because we couldn't find you doesn't mean we're afraid of you Yuzumaki. Naruto smirked, before appearing in front of the three losers, flicking them each in the forehead, causing them all to fly off past the three girls and into a pile of cleaning supplies. All three shouted about how they would get their revenge as they ran away. Mocha and Kurumu both rushed over to Tsukun to help him, while Yukari went and admired Naruto for his strength by jumping and hanging from his arm. Cafeteria. 
Mocha and Kurumu were both talking about how they should beat Tsukun's bodyguards, after complaining about the three perverts who kept following them around everywhere, Yukari solving her problem by hanging with Naruto, who simply destroyed the pervert's camera and finger flicked the boy away. Tsukun walked away with his head down, only to be followed by Mocha, as Naruto secretly had a shadow clone follow them. With Mocha and Tsukun. Mocha had just got done apologizing to Tsukun as he walked away to his dorm room. Mocha looked down, sad she failed to cheer him up. Mocha looked shocked when she felt someone put their hand on her shoulder. But you know, humans release a different energy than monsters, even boundary beings like Yukari give off a stronger energy. Tsukun on the other hand has no energy to release, therefore, he must be human, but I am a bit shocked you know. Mocha turned to face Naruto and saw him smiling. He must have some deep feelings for you to stay here with the threat of death looming over him like that. Mocha thought on his words, blushing at what they implied. Please don't. Before she could finish, Naruto put a finger to her lips. I will not tell anyone, I promise, and I never go back on my word. Mocha smiled as she gave Naruto a hug. The next day. Tsukun was standing at the bus stop, waiting for the bus, as the three stooges showed up. Where do you get off calling her Mocha? She is one of our sacred goddesses. Naruto stepped out in front of Tsukun, causing the three rejects to glare. Kozo speaking. Well, Yuzumaki, I hope you're ready, cause since we're off school grounds, we can go at you with everything we got, umbrella. Kozo placed his megaphone on his head as it grew and turned his entire upper torso into an umbrella. Neck neck. After a bit of grunting, Kubasaki stretched his neck. Lob. Asaburo shouted as his shirt burst open to show his unsightly body. Kozo glared at the two males that were their opponents. They're both gonna die for stealing the women we love. Naruto smirked as he charged up lightning along his arms, readying them to launch a thunder strike at the three weaklings, Kozo began to spin his umbrella head as something wet started to flying off him, sadly landing on Naruto. Ah. Naruto was shocked by his own lightning as the water hit him, causing Kozo to stop and look at him. What the fuck is the water? Kozo actually smirked. Brain water that my monster form pretty much shoots out all the time, I am a weather-type monster of course, but I wouldn't expect you to be able to battle with lightning now. Naruto smirked as he placed his arm on the ground, pulling up also caused a rock pillar of 5 feet and a 6 inch diameter to come with it. Naruto launched the pillar at the three monsters as Kozo and Kubasaki moved out of the way, but Basaburo wasn't fast enough, leaving him to take the hit directly in the stomach, only for him to straighten up and launch the pillar back at Naruto, who was caught off guard and hit directly in the chest. What the fuck? How are they able to throw the elements back at me? Naruto now sported burns along his arms, as well as a red bruise on his chest, revealing his rock pillar ruined his fishnet shirt that he wore under his cloak. With a poof of smoke, Naruto was now shirtless, revealing exactly how much muscle he had. Kozo speaking for all four of the boys who were there. Am, he is ripped. Kubasaki crying. No wonder Yukari likes him. Naruto prepared to launch fire at the three loons, all three panicking, though the umbrella monster began to spin faster than before, causing a twister to form. Naruto launched the flames at the three, only for the rain water that was flung off the umbrella to weaken it enough so the twister could push the flames back. Naruto grunted as he was hit with his own attack again, which was really pissing him off. All three monsters were in shock at their achievements so far, only for the moment to be ruined when their goddesses appeared, all flying with Kurumu. All three had seen what the fire attack did and all were shocked at Naruto's condition. Kurumu commenting towards Yukari. Am, they are putting your boyfriend through the ringer. Mocha looked at Naruto's eyes. No, Naruto is getting annoyed with them, he isn't losing, just underestimating them, without trying. Naruto glared at the three stooges. I hate it when my attacks are sent back at me, I promised the headmaster I wouldn't kill anyone too. So wind and non-elemental attacks are out of the question against these guys for me, have fun ladies. Tsukun looked a bit more down than yesterday as they showed up. Once again I am saved by everyone else. Mocha slapped Tsukun across his cheek as he said that. Friends help friends, will you accept that already? Kurumu walked up to him. Besides, you helped me against that other Mocha, doesn't that count for anything? Mocha smiled. You also helped me when I thought I wasn't going to have any friends, and you're the only one who can remove my Rosario. Naruto smirked. That's all great and everything, but I am still unable to hit these guys with my non-lethal elements. All three members of the fan club's club stared at Naruto, Kozo commenting. And it just so happens to be the stronger one who remembers us. Kurumu flew towards the blob as she struck out with her claws, as they just nearly got stuck several times, causing her to retreat. Yukari was already retreating from the neck monster who was spouting about wrapping her in his neck. Mocha unable to get close to the umbrella monster due to all the disgusting wet stuff he was throwing at her. Tsukun watched on, trying to think of a plan as Naruto noticed something. 
with his tongue out, it's almost as if that rain water is his spit I will kill that bastard. Naruto began to look darker as he got more pissed off. Tsukune began shouting at the three lame monsters. Hey, you three, you call yourselves a fan club, but all you really are is a bunch of creepy stalkers, you're pathetic. Hozo wait, you're calling us pathetic. Basaburo not only that, but perverted ugly monster trash too. Tsukune I didn't say that last part. Hozo glared at Tsukune as he spoke for all three of them. You sure thought that though. Well you won't have to look at us much longer because we're gonna destroy you. All three shouted as Kozo began to do commentary for their new form. Well now it's time for the fan club collision. Basaburo super secret. Kubasaki angry amalgam attack. As all three shouted amalgam, they became a giant blob monster with a mouth on its stomach along with an umbrella on its back. Not so pathetic now are we tiny. Actually, the only pathetic on here is you. The monster swatted Tsukune aside as Naruto stepped back up to fight as well, hoping for a different outcome with this form. Only for everyone to stop and turn to witness Mocha being released. So you three woke me up. The goddess who descended from heaven above. The battle is the same from here on out. Naruto looked at Mocha. Nice to see you again. Mocha smirked at Naruto. So you got beat up huh? Guess you're not as powerful as I thought. Their monster forms are perfect for countering, getting close to them would have left me open to getting tangled up in the one guy's neck and I didn't expect to be assaulted by my own elemental attacks. Mocha actually looked at the three. That's where some things are weak, they shine brighter elsewhere. Mocha turned to Tsukune as he spoke to her. S I wound up being saved by you again huh Mocha? Tsukune, your leaving doesn't work for me, without you there would be no food for yours truly and it would make the other Mocha sad. Leaving? Who said anything about leaving? Naruto also looked confused. I followed Tsukune here in case those three nut jobs showed up and I assumed that you three followed my example due to saying how you were gonna be his bodyguards or something. Tsukune chuckled slightly. Naruto ran into me while I was walking here and asked about the briefcase, which is full of letters that I was gonna ask the bus driver to mail for me. All the girls looked shocked as Yukari pointed out Mocha jumped to conclusions. The following day. Tsukune stood up shouting as they were told about a new payphone, which just after, Mocha drank some of his blood, causing Naruto to shake his head. We find our blonde boundary being wandering around, with everyone asking him to join their club, while Yukari clung to his back, smiling as he walked as if she wasn't clinging to him. Naruto actually didn't mind the young genius clinging to him, even though she called him her boyfriend all the time, making a lot of girls actually glare at her, Naruto had already shot down Yukari's pleas to a three-way with Mocha. Yukari had actually began to cry, till he placed his hand on her head, telling her she needed to mature more, and not just mentally, though she did drag a promise to be her first when she turned 18, which he allowed if she was still single. Naruto hoped she wouldn't put her love life on hold for him, he wanted her happy, but he didn't want her to be held down, because she had a crush on him that could turn out to be just that, a simple temporary crush. Naruto and Yukari crossed paths with Tsukune and Mocha as they were walking through the crowds, looking for a decent club, while Yukari decided to drag Mocha along with them, while Tsukune and Naruto followed the little girl pulling the pinket around. Tsukune followed alongside Naruto as they spoke. Does this school have any normal clubs? Mocha has already been approached by mummies, chemists, and even a guy with needles sticking out of him. Naruto had a flashback to his battle against Haku and shivered a bit. Naruto and Tsukune were stopped as they were approached by a green-haired beauty in a bikini, Naruto began to sniff the air slightly as he tilted his head, causing several girls to ogle him. Yukari and Mocha both watched as the skimpy-clad greenette flirted with their boys as they both went back to pull her off them as Tsukune spoke. Well, I guess we have a winner, I used to take swimming in my old school, so this should be fun. Right, Mocha. Naruto muttered fish as Yukari grabbed him, actually thinking along the same lines of Tsukune as they both imagined Mocha in a bikini, though the guy she was being held by was different and in one case with an extra girl. Naruto looked at the girls who were all in swimwear as they all enticed him to join, all the while, he was just curious about why they all smelt like fish. Later in the pool. Tsukune was being tended to by the green that they met earlier, as Naruto was being taught by two other members, though he was more along the lines of teaching Yukari, while the two girls frowned over how he looked like a big brother teaching his little sister, which caused Yukari to pout, before glomping Naruto and calling him her boyfriend. Naruto just chuckled as he hugged her, finding it amusing how the girls kept teasing the young genius. Naruto then caught Mocha running off as she shouted about Tsukune wanting to meet other girls, though Naruto knew the real reason, he also noticed her flinch when the club captain splashed her with water. Naruto narrowed his eyes as he went to holding the still complaining Yukari with one arm, which caused her to realize he was distracted, which led to her finding out Mocha left Tsukune with a swimming bimbo. 
Both then watched as Kurumu jumped in and landed on Tsukyun and planted his face firmly between her legs as she landed. Naruto sweat dropped as he watched her rub herself against him, asking him to teach her how to swim, not understanding how she could be so open about where she tried her moves on him. Skipping the here pounding girls. 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 Swim meet. Loka sat there in an alley when she heard footsteps, only to look and find Naruto. Tsukyun couldn't follow you to the swim girl and Kurumu keeping him back, so I decided to send a shadow clone to check up on you. Loka smiled at him. Tsukyun is such a jerk. Naruto smirked. Actually, he's just dumb and thought he would get to see you in a bikini if he joined the swim club. He was also looking for a way to impress you by joining a club that allowed him a chance if any to impress you. Personally, I wouldn't have minded seeing you in a bikini myself. Loka smiled as she blushed. Water harms vampires. Naruto sighed loudly. Tsukyun will be disappointed about that. Inermoka listened in from behind the Rosario as Naruto continued to cheer up her pink-haired counterpart. I also noticed the ceiling effects on your Rosario. Loka looked confused as Naruto spoke of her Rosario. The Rosario doesn't simply seal off your power, it seals off part of your blood, leaving me to believe that this is what Inermoka would be if she never had her power, while she is what you would be if you had all your power. This leads me to believe I can allow both of you to stretch your legs, but with what I have in mind, there might be some limits. This is between the two of you to discuss, I can create a new Rosario seal for you, that will allow you both to exist at the same time, but if you both are against this, then I will not even try it. Moka looked slightly shocked as she heard this, and smiled at Naruto, and was about to speak, if he hadn't disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Moka looked shocked, as she decided to go see if something happened, in her Moka giving her two cents. He appears to be a much better man than that human, and his skills are much more useful than the blood of a simple human, he might even taste just as good, he even has a way to allow us more freedom from the seal. Though I do wonder why his clone disappeared like that. Back at the swimming pool. Naruto had just pulled Yukari away from several fish girls, which when Naruto asked, he was told they were mermaids, though even after he lifted and threw them off him, they continued to bite him. Naruto managed to get Yukari out of the pool by tossing her to Kurumu, though he was now being bitten on both shoulders, as the two mermaids swam up behind him, two more swimming up to him and biting onto his forearms, pinning him down. Tsukyun was panicking as Tamao tried to bite onto him, causing Naruto to panic slightly, losing control over his barrier, as the mermaids finally sank their teeth into him. Naruto snarled as he slowly sank into the water, along with the four mermaids attached to him. Loka arrived just in time to hear Tsukyun scream for help, leading her to jump in to help him, only for her to sink. Kurumu grabbed Tamao off Tsukyun and allow him to go help Moka. Tsukyun swam down reaching to remove the Rosario, and as he did, he also noticed a shadow below Moka. Everyone above water watched on as the water swirled, Yukari was crying over Naruto getting pulled under the surface when he tossed her out of the pool. Slowly rising from the pool was Inner Mocha and Tsukyun, except they were both on the back of a sturdy looking shell, which continued to rise until they saw three flat turtle tails, along with the head of said turtle, which looked like Naruto, wearing a thick jaw guard, as well as his hair becoming paler, along with gaining thickness equal to that of the shell. His arms and legs turned somewhat pale as well, his skin becoming leathery. Looking at his form, they noticed he now resembled a turtle, the thick shell actually attaching itself to him like the shell of a real turtle. He also appeared to be walking on the water, looking like a kappa with three tails, and a very thick shell that appeared to guard his entire body. Yukari was in awe, while the mermaids stared in fear, as the new Naruto tossed the four mermaids who were feeding on him at them. Moka looked at Naruto as he glared at the fish women and grabbed Tsukyun by the collar, jumping off the shell of Naruto's. Naruto glared at the mermaids as Tamao swam forward to glare at the male. So, you're Yakai of the sea as well. Naruto smirked, his voice coming out distorted, almost as if there were two people talking at once. Actually, I have more power than just this, Isabu is the strongest defensive form I have. Several mermaids cowered further away as the boy spoke. Some recognized the form of a demon their parents mentioned, or from the tales of a great beast who traveled the earth so long ago. The great beast that embodied the power of the ocean, which slightly resembled the person in front of them. Naruto smirked, which with his current jaw, was barely seen. Well then, shall we go at it or what? Hama rushed past the oversized kappa, as the other mermaids rushed him head on, heading straight for Mocha. Naruto easily baited the mermaids off him with a single blast of water from his maw, one. Mocha simply kicked Hama away from her and into a fishing net on the other side of the pool. The mermaids were all feeling battered as they laid about the tiles by the pool. Mocha smacked Tsukyun as she reprimanded him for his actions, before turning to Naruto, who almost resembled a teenage mutant ninja turtle, as he walked around, though with his jaw, eyes and thicker skin, he looked much more frightening. What exactly is that? 
Naruto's skin began to regain its color as his shell began to gain color as it shrank, transforming into his back and chest, his jaw doing the same, until he was back in his human form, which he surprisingly enough had a pair of frog boxers covering him. Yukari blushed as she ran up to him, jumped into his arms and cried about thinking he was drained of his youth, causing Naruto to have a spandex-clad flashback. Naruto chuckled a bit, holding Yukari as he responded Mocha. I guess it was centuries ago, but there used to be ninja who possessed a demon sealed within them, they were called Jinchuriki, and I am the last, as well as the container for all nine of the demons. I possess ten forms in all, and each has separate uses, and you just saw the three-tailed demon, Asabu in his natural environment. Yukari was fascinated, while Kurumu and Tsukun were shocked, Mocha on the other hand actually smirked at the blonde. Now I really look forward to fighting you, but now the match will have to wait due to me having to rest. Mocha walked off as she ignored Tsukun trying to talk to her. Several days later again. I would like to welcome all of you to the newspaper club. Tsukun looked around before asking. Are we the only members? In front of Nekanam was, from right to LEFT from her point of view, was Kurumu, Tsukun, Mocha, Naruto and Yukari. She continued to smile as someone announced their entrance as Nekanam introduced them. Actually, he's in the club as well. The older male smiled, somehow causing his teeth to ping in the light. Sorry I'm late, but I had to pick up some things. Well, my name is Janae. But please call me Jin. Jin proceeded to hand a bouquet of red roses to Mocha and a pink bouquet to Kurumu, before pulling a pink rose from Kurumu's bouquet and handing it to Yukari. Looks like good things do come in small packages. Nekanam said something about a staff meeting before rushing out, leaving Jin to explain things to the new members. Jin proceeded to tell them about the newspaper, about them editing and publishing the school newspaper. Before becoming very enthusiastic about how the club was not for the faint of heart. Jin asked about any ideas for the paper, when Kurumu suggested going after the pervert that was wandering the campus. Jin watched as Mocha and Kurumu both tried to place the posters up, higher and higher, as Jin continued to ask them to place them higher up. Jin squatted down, getting a look up their skirts, as Tsukun came up behind him, as he copied him in order to see what he was looking at, and was shocked at what Jin was doing. Both boys were caught off guard when Naruto kicked Jin in his head, who flew into Tsukun, knocking both to the ground, as the three girls looked to see what the ruckus was. Yukari jumping up to hang off Naruto's back, wrapping her arms around the blonde's neck. They peeped up your skirts. Naruto's one sentence ended up with both Jin and Tsukun getting slapped. Yukari commented how he deserved it, Kurumu saying if he wanted to see her panties he could have asked, and Mocha walking away saying she hated perverts. Next morning. Naruto, with his witchy backpack watched as Tsukun followed Mocha, begging her for her forgiveness. Naruto shook his head as he noticed Mocha's facial features as he watched her pass him. Yukari still believing Tsukun deserved what he was getting and was trying to convince Naruto to go get Mocha, Naruto merely chuckled at the young girl on his back. She is upset at Tsukun, she still has feelings for him, so I assume it is useless for me to go pick her up. Naruto chuckled as Yukari pouted. Later. Naruto watched on as Tsukun was glared at by Mocha and Kurumu for being caught peeping again, Yukari was sitting next to him, as they all listened to Tsukun's side of the story, which Naruto actually believed him when he said he was just walking by when they looked out the window. Naruto knew his peepers after all, and Tsukun was too chicken to be one. Naruto sighed as he stepped up to the two girls. I know perverts, and Tsukun is too jellabin to peep. Yukari looked at Naruto as he said that. You're a pervert Naruto. Naruto smiled at her as he answered. Actually, I am anti-pervert. I actually expose perverts when I catch them peeping, I was even taught by a man who found it insulting to be called a pervert. All four people looked at Naruto, the girls actually smiling at him, before he continued. He would then proudly shout about how he was the super pervert, he wrote a smutty book for adults and got his material by peeping on women as they were in the hot springs usually, but he would occasionally get lucky and find a couple girls in bikini swimming in a river. All four of the other people there were shocked, while the three girls were also appalled. Naruto smiled as he continued. But when the chips were down, he would show just why he was in class threat, he was the strongest of my home, as well as my godfather. He was wise when serious and kind when he felt like it. His dream was for everyone everywhere to live in peace, and I look forward to carrying on his dream. The girls were now confused on what to feel about that, they would have liked to meet the man, but they also knew they would not like him. The girls left the room to talk as Naruto sat there reminiscing, Tsukun walked off, asking why no one believed him, only for Jin to show up and tell him he believed him. Naruto was watching out the window as he saw Jin guide Tsukun to a window that lead to a room he didn't know about, only for Tsukun to turn around as Jin took several pictures. Naruto watched as things played out, hoping to find out what Jin was planning. 
Naruto found himself watching Mocha and Jin on the roof talking, as Jin revealed to Mocha that he had proof Tsukun was a peeper. Naruto glared as his teeth became fangs, his whiskers thickened, and his pupils became slits, till he heard him mentioning a drum, and Kurumu and Yukari both appeared and asked him how he knew that, only for them to be dressed as Sherlock Holmes and Watson. Naruto had to hold a laugh back as he saw the two. They proceeded to interrogate Jin, proving more and more that Tsukyun wasn't a peeper, and revealed that Jin was in fact a peeper, and as he stepped back in shock, a whole picture album worth of photos dropped from his school coat. Naruto watched on as Jin jumped away from the girls and transformed into a werewolf, before jumping in and nearly hitting Mocha. Tsukyun chose this time to come to the roof as he rushed past Kurumu and Yukari, Kurumu warning him about werewolves. Naruto watched as Tsukyun dived past Jin and managed to snag Mocha's Rosario off her before Jin stomped on his back. The near Mocha was awakened as she was now glaring at the wolf. Jin began to glare at the girl as he shouted about how he knew how to pick girls, before stating how he was gonna make Mocha his woman. Mocha was having trouble following Jin, as the wolf sped past her several times, trimming off bits of her clothes at each pass, only for around the third time, he was stopped, as well as his mocking of Mocha, when a red nine-tailed werewolf appeared before him. He was slim, with a red cloak that had black flames along the bottom, as well as brown pants similar to his own, he also had a more vulpine look to him. Jin, meet Karama. Everyone was shocked as they recognized Naruto's dual voice, similar to when he turned into that turtle, as Sabu they remembered him calling that form. Naruto kicked Jin away from him, as Jin took a moment to stare at the spectacle before him, after all, it wasn't every day you meet a vulpine werewolf. Mocha was the first to ask. So, this is your ninth transformation, Naruto. Naruto smirked as he kept his eyes focused on Jin. Yes, I guess it isn't hard to guess from the amount of tails I have, but this form is Kurama, the nine-tailed fox, or Kaiubi no Kitsune. Everyone's eyes widened as they heard him, Kitsune's being in glass demon, you could hardly blame them. Jin actually backed off a bit, which didn't help as Naruto rushed forward, fighting Jin with speed versus speed. Jin knew how fast Kitsune could be, they were probably the only yakai that could challenge him in speed, and on the night of a full moon, he figured he would win, until he was KFO. Naruto transformed back to his human form as he created a shadow clone to drag Jin to the infirmary. Mocha smirked at Naruto as she snagged the Rosario from Tsukyun and replaced it in order to rest. The next day. We actually find Jin running from a mob of angry women, while the other club members were putting up their first story, though as Tsukyun asked if any of them thought their first story would have been about proving his innocence, only for him to get a nosebleed from accidentally getting a peacock Mocha's skirt. The newspaper club was all standing around, handing out the school newspaper they worked so hard on. They each had their own columns as well as the everyday news. Yukari had taken the job of schooling advice, mostly on how to study properly. Jin's ended up mostly talking about girls, one subject being the top 10 girls, which he picked. Kurumu's was all about fashion, and even a bit on gossip. Naruto mostly gave his advice on problems he heard about, trying to keep everyone's spirits high, and even added humor to his column with some jokes. Tsukyun's personal column was mostly a journal entry, he talked about everything that went on in the school, from the view of the weak, which gave everyone a perspective of how it feels to be under the foot of the bigger stronger monsters, in hopes of getting the stronger monsters to take it easier on the weaker ones, that helped, in some cases. Male monsters started calling him a girl in boys' clothing, while girls saw him as sensitive, but everyone was seeing him as lonely, also gaining him pity from some. Mocha had trouble finding her own thing to write, until Naruto advised her in interviews, so while also giving her thoughts on Yukari's own column, she also used her own to show what was most popular, even having charts to show the majority preferred weekly subject. This week, she had been asking girls and even the boys about their opinions on the top 10 guys, in order to give the girls their say in who deserved to be on the top list, which shockingly, Naruto and Tsukun were on, and Jin wasn't. Naruto actually made second, with some Kaiyu beating him by a couple of votes. Mocha even took respectable pictures of each person on the list. Jin was ranting when he found out he didn't make it on the list, while Naruto commented about how he could go with just his sage cloak on for his picture, with Yukari fully agreeing, and tried to convince Mocha to let him do IT1. When they went to get Kaius, the boy was honestly a little confused about it, though he did state he was flattered by earning the first place, even if he appeared to care less. They were all talking about throwing a party for selling out all their papers, only for a purple-haired girl to walk up and ask for one, and Tsukyun offering his folded-up one he had in his pocket. As the girl took the paper, she moved closer to Tsukyun. You're a lot cuter than I thought you'd be. Naruto smirked as he stepped up beside Tsukyun. Well, I guess this means there's a third one after you, huh, Mr. Seventh? Tsukyun sighed as Naruto continued to pick on him, though he called Jin Mr. Nun, he was getting tired of the reference to his position on the top 10 guys list. 
The purple-haired girl looked at Naruto as she noticed how he was extremely friendly and frowned a bit. I'll see you around, Tsukyun. As she walked away, Naruto pouted about being ignored while the girls questioned Tsukyun about knowing her. Tsukyun told them to forget about the girl before saying to have the party of their lives after school. Naruto frowned at Tsukyun. In class. Naruto listened as Nekunam took roll call until she asked for Shireyuki, only to repeat the name a couple more times, but before she could mark her as absent, the same purple-haired girl from that morning walked into the classroom. Naruto watched her as she walked to the seat in front of Tsukyun, Nekunam looked thrilled as the girl sat down and introduced her as Mr. Shireyuki and asking everyone to treat her as a friend. After class. Moka and Kurumu were talking with Naruto and Tsukyun after class, telling them they were gonna buy the snacks and head to the party, which Naruto knew was just going to be Kurumu filling Tsukyun with homemade snacks while flirting, while Moka bounced back and forth between Kurumu's plan and satisfying Yukari when the girl asks her to come hang off him with her. Naruto remembered when he ended up with Moka hanging off his back for an hour, just so Yukari would be happy. Naruto never complained Tsukyun got a bit upset, only for him to pout as Kurumu tried with him, and he ended up hurt Naruto doesn't let him live that down either. Naruto watched as Moka dragged Kurumu to go complete their tasks when Mizer was spotted by Tsukyun. Who's there? Oh, it's you, Mizer right? Mizer appeared to have a constant blush on her face as she looked at Tsukyun, only for her to lose some of it as she noticed Naruto standing by him but kept smiling at Tsukyun. I read your paper, and as usual, your articles are the best. Tsukyun actually looked surprised for a minute. You're familiar with my work? Mizer pulled out a notebook and handed it to Tsukyun. Even before I came to school, Miss Nekunam brought over issues of the Yakai Gazette for me to read, and yours are the only ones I kept. Naruto looked over Tsukyun's shoulder as the boy looked shocked and maybe a bit disturbed. Naruto got a chuckle out of the notebook. These actually look like fascinating notes, maybe you should read through it and take some notes of your own Tsukyun, and you might become a better writer or maybe even a poet. Mizer tilted her head as she tapped her right toes on the floor, folding her hands behind her back. I like all the articles you write, you're always writing things from the view of the helpless and weak, and I can really relate. Your personality and the way you think is a lot like the way I think. Mizer stepped forward to hug Tsukyun's arm as he began to panic. You must be lonely like me, trust me, I know exactly what that's like. Later, by a lake that is somewhere. Mizer had dragged Tsukyun along with her as she led him to a lake and began to skip stones, which Tsukyun reluctantly did as well, though Naruto also skipped a few, enjoying the activity due to not getting much chance to play games like this with friends. Mizer kept blankly looking at him every time he smiled at her, while he made an offhand comment about her not scowling at him anymore. Tsukyun was wondering why Naruto wasn't panicking, as he knew the blonde was friendly and smart, and the fact that the blonde was taking everything easily and enjoying his time with who he knew they both knew to most likely be a stalker. Mizer skipped the rock nine times as she celebrated by happily shouting her feet to Tsukyun, with boys clapping for her, though Naruto was a bit more enthusiastic about it, even though he had to learn to hold back his strength to even hit the water, accidentally blasting a rock through a tree the first time he tried. Tsukyun turned to walk away saying how they had to do something important, only for Mizer to hug him from behind, picking on him about only getting four skips. Naruto chuckling at Tsukyun's misfortune, decided to add his two cents in. Well, why don't you go convince the girls to come out here for the party while I keep Mizer company, since you obviously are too embarrassed to continue. Mizer lost all emotion when she began to talk, ignoring the blonde as he pouted for being ignored. You want to go to that buddy buddy club of yours don't you, I don't know what I might do to her if you go, all you have to do is be mine and mine alone, that's it. Tsukyun looked to get a bit more serious than usual, rather than panic about how he thought she was going to kill Mocha, which he learned from watching Naruto deal with bullies a couple times, though when the blonde did it, people began to panic. Both boys were caught off guard when she threw Tsukyun into Naruto, launching them over the lake as it froze, causing them to slide back further. Tsukyun was the one to question her. Why are you doing this? Naruto shoved the boy off him. Why must I be dragged into your love issues with every girl you meet? Mizer began walking unhindered on the ice towards them. I'm not gonna let you get away from me. Tsukyun was becoming more and more shocked as the girl walked closer and closer, causing ice to form spikes behind her with every step. What the hell are you? You have really never seen a snow woman before. Naruto grunted as he slipped on the ice again. Haku used ice, he also had water techniques, but he looked like a girl, though he was a guy, he was, and still is, the prettiest guy I have ever met, I sometimes still argue he was a she, and told me he was a he to screw with me. Both people actually stopped to give the blonde a strange look. Naruto grunted as he stood, red hair growing from his muscles, as his chest became a bit thicker. Naruto grew larger muscles as he also sprouted four monkey tails. 
The best way to go about fighting ice is with fire, or in this case, lava. Naruto had the perfect plan, he would take his four-tailed form and scare the girl into backing off, sadly, he didn't count on his form radiating enough heat to melt the ice below his feet or for his new weight to drop him through the now melting ice. Turning back to Tsukyun, she decided to continue her explanation. We were drawn together Tsukyun, we are both extremely lonely, we can understand one another. Tsukyun began to panic more as he was inkist in ice up to his waist. Ignoring his pleas for her to stop, she continued to encase him as she spoke. We are fated to be with each other. And after you are fully encased in ice, no one will ever come between us again. Once I do that, you will be mine and mine alone, won't you Tsukyun? Tsukyun. Mizer was shocked to see Mocha and Kurumu flying in. But I killed you. Kurumu smirked at Mizer. I swooped in and saved Mocha at the last minute. I made a special cake with a love potion mixed in it especially for Tsukyun, and now it's ruined. Mizer glared back as she raised her arms, causing ice to stab at the flying duo. You stay out of my way. The two girls crash landed on Tsukyun, breaking him free as they checked on each other. Mizer stepped towards them, her eyes being icy whitish blue. All of you trying to get in between the true love that mine and Tsukyun's, especially you, Miss Mocha, I've had enough. Tsukyun stepped in front of her as she was about to attack. Stop this, stop this before it goes any further. Mizer looked shocked, while Naruto broke through the ice he was stuck in, only managing to get his head out too. Why do you stop me? You of all the people, we share the same loneliness why don't you? Mizer was cut off by Tsukyun shouting. You're wrong. I'm not lonely. Mizer looked heartbroken and was about to cry. You're rejecting me. You don't care about my feelings. Tsukyun why? Mizer shouted that last bit as she caused a blizzard to appear and disappear with it. Kurumu was the first to notice as the ice broke and caused them to fall into the lake. Naruto watched as he smirked about not being the only one to fall through the ice, which he admits to assuming he would have been the only one, like it was with being tied to the stump and getting left there. Naruto turned to look where he sensed Mizer running towards and decided to go and confront as well as comfort her. He knew she needed comfort by remembering how he felt after Sakura rejected him, though he was a stupid headstrong brat, so he went back to try again. But he imagined if he was like Hinata and he tried to confess his feeling and say all that about being fated to be together, only to be rejected, though Sakura would have been much more cruel than Tsukyun. Mizer was lonely and he recognized her eyes when she was skipping stones with him. He had the same eyes when Iruka bought him Raymond for the first time, the look of finally having someone to do something with and not have them reject you because of what you are. Later in the woods. Naruto found Mizer crying as she held her face in her hands, curled up. You know, Tsukyun doesn't really have the spine to get mad at people, he can't even give a girl a piggyback ride. Mizer felt shocked as she heard the blonde Tsukyun hung out with, not realizing he followed her, actually thinking he was still stuck under the ice when she ran away. What? Naruto sat down behind her, his back against hers. Tsukyun may have said those things, but he wasn't aiming to be cruel, he just doesn't have feelings for you. Hell, I bet he really only ever looks at Mocha with love. The thing is, you wanted him to yourself and tried to kill the girl he loves, which would lead to him actually hating you, which is why I believed he was so harsh with his words. Mizer glared at nothing as she replied. Then why aren't you mad that I tried to kill your friend? Naruto smiled. Cause you didn't. After spending years sealed away in a statue, with no one to talk to except nine different voices in my head as I trained to use their power, as everyone I know and love dies of old age around me, as well as the fact that I had a family I was not allowed to meet. You tend to calm down and look at life differently. Mizer was shocked and confused. Shouldn't you be mad, far madder than this, if I was you, I would have given up and tried to die already. Naruto smiled. Because I feel, I can truly reach my godfather's dream in this time, my goal of cage has vanished, but my dream where a world without war is still reachable, I made a promise to those I left behind to live, I also promised that I would find the answer to true peace, and I never break a promise. Mizer smiled as she listened, feeling the confidence and strength that rolled off the blonde man behind her, who wasn't bothered by the cold she released. Naruto continued to talk in order to keep cheering her up. And again, I wasn't called the number one hyperactive knuckleheaded ninja for nothing, maybe I'm too stupid to die. Mizer actually giggled. Mizer had read all the articles, but it passed off Naruto as an idiot who smiled because he had everything, but she was starting to see, he just had the strength to smile while he had nothing. Naruto interrupted her thoughts. The thing is, everyone needs someone, I also don't believe in fate or even destiny. I even defied fate several times and even defied a priestess's prediction that I would be stabbed in the chest, which she sacrificed herself to prevent after I became her friend. Which I defied fate once again and dragged her from the clutches of darkness that she had sacrificed herself to in order to protect me. Mizer frowned. 
that's confusing. Naruto chuckled. Try going back in time and meeting your father who is supposed to be dead, while no one, not even yourself, remembers when you return to your own time. Bizar rubbed her head. I don't want to. Both were interrupted when Kitsubo walked into the clearing. Oh, it's you. Bizar turned to see the Fies. Ed. Teacher, Kitsubo. Naruto stood to talk to the man. Is there a problem, Teach? Kitsubo smirked as he suddenly grew tentacles before answering Naruto. Sure, you're in the way. Naruto narrowed his eyes. In the way of what? Kitsubo smirked. There is no one around for quite a ways, so that means you're the only witness, which means without you, no one will know what happens here, and even if someone comes around, you were stabbed by an icicle, while well, I am defending myself against a crazy snow bitch that's upset because of something when I came to check on her. Naruto growled as he too grew tentacles from his tailbone. Squid or octopus. Itsubo smirked as he spoke, assuming the blonde to be one of those, and figured the blonde would freak the moment he found out what he really was, before he killed him as he turned to run. Actually neither, I am a kraken. Naruto smirked as he began to grow muscles, as well as bull horns. Well, because you were so kind to tell me what you were. I am Jaiwuki, the eight-tailed ox demon. Mizur and Kitsubo both were shocked at hearing that, while Naruto gained his dual voice, as well as brown skin. Naruto rushed against Kitsubo, as their tails collided, Naruto tangling up his own with Kitsubo's, in order to keep them from attacking him as he got in close. Kitsubo was not a fize. Ed. Teacher for nothing though, and so a physical fight was simply both of them decking each other several times before Naruto planted a kick in Kitsubo's gut, using him as a springboard to jump back for some room. Kitsubo was about to bum rush Naruto and continue trying to overpower the boy until Mizer froze the teacher in a block of ice. Quickly, we should run. Mizer wrapped her arms around Naruto's arm as she dragged him off, away from there. If we are found with him like that, then they will blame us, they will believe him over us, and we will be in trouble. Naruto actually believed that, and as much as he could laugh and slap the person who told him to leave aside with ease, he promised to be a good boy. As that thought went through his head, Naruto had a flashback to Ibido. Later, at a cliff edge. Vizor watched as Naruto looked out over the water. Is Jaiwuki one of the voices you told me about? And there are eight others in your head that allow you to become monsters. Naruto chuckled. My powers are simple really, as a baby, my father sealed a demon into me, and later on I sealed eight more. After doing so, an enemy found it apparent that he had to get rid of me, so he sealed me into the form of a statue, long enough so that he would have the time to rule the world, and I wouldn't be able to stop him. While I was sealed I learned to use the powers of each of them, which allows me access to their abilities, but as I use their powers, I tend to take their forms, the reason monsters are the way they are, is because the human form is unable to stand such power, the changes allow for our bodies to hold the power, our forms grant. That's why it's harder and harder to look human for stronger yakai, well the weaker you are the easier it is. When I use their power, it morphs my body to compensate for the extra power, and with each type of power, comes a different form. There is a tenth form, where all nine powers combine, but that form is too powerful for me to really control. It runs on base instinct, already having mine as well as the other nine beings' emotions within it. It also absorbs the power and energy of the beings around it, so that adds more chaos to its mind, costing me more control. Vizor remembered Naruto's power as Jaiwuki, and how he stood against a Kraken Yakai, and believed he would have won, and imagined multiplying that power by nine, before thinking on how frightening that would be. Vizor was cut from her thoughts and Naruto from explaining more as Tsukun ran up to them. Don't worry you guys, Professor Kitsubo will be fine, all you have to do is come back and sincerely apologize, and everything will be okay. Naruto's eyes became cold, while Mizer looked down, crying as she hugged herself. I am sure if you show them you're sorry, then you won't be expelled. What's wrong? Tsukun looked worried as he took notice of Mizer crying. Naruto growled as the wind picked up, making everything cold, as Mizer felt no one cared about what the pervert tried to do. No one will ever care, everyone will believe everyone else over me, so why should I care? Mizer screamed as she finished, Naruto's eyes becoming rippled, as he glared at Tsukun, the girls showed up yelling for Tsukun. Naruto watched as the girls explained things to Tsukun, who regretted speaking before he had Mizers in his side of the story. So, are you gonna tell me that I should apologize for him threatening to kill me? Tsukun and the girls were shocked at the blonde's anger. Itsubo had said Mizer froze him before running off with Naruto, Jin explained that Naruto started to talk with a man before he threatened Naruto and proclaiming his goal of harming Mizer, and Naruto defended her, only for Mizer to freeze Kitsubo before the fight could go too far. Tsukun was actually slightly afraid of Naruto for a minute there. He had never seen Naruto this mad. The cliffside they were all on was suddenly frozen over as Mizer's powers went haywire. 
as the next wave that splashed onto the cliff was frozen before it became red ice clones of Mizer. The ground beneath Naruto and Mizer collapsed, causing Mizer to fall from the cliff as Naruto caught her as he grabbed the ledge. Sukyun was close enough that he was able to grab onto Naruto's arm as he hung there, but the three girls were being surrounded by the red ice clones who were mumbling about how the world hated her. Mizer watched as Naruto glared at Sukyun and felt a slight warmth as she realized it was because Sukyun told her to apologize to Katsubo. Sukyun tried to help them up only for Naruto to refuse his help as he held her hand to keep her from falling. Naruto was greatly upset at Sukyun for telling her to apologize. Sukyun looked down at the two. Mizer, there is something I failed to say before, I didn't mean to be so harsh, but the reason I'm not alone is because I made so many friends and I would like to be your friend as well. I am also sorry for not getting the full story when I heard the first half, the only thing on my mind was finding you and fixing my mistake from earlier. Naruto stopped glaring, at least he was apologizing. Mizer was still sad, but with Naruto clinging to her wrist like he was, she actually felt better, even though he fell because she lost it, he didn't let go, he was mad at Sukyun for his actions and was helping her even though it was her fault they were hanging off the cliff. Several ice clones walked up behind Sukyun, saying how if they were her friends, they would die with her. Mocha pushed the clone in her way away from her as she rushed towards Tsukyun, jumping to help him, only for their hands to pass the other as Tsukyun pulled Mocha's Rosario off. Naruto gave the two a deadpan look as Mocha stood up after her transformation. If you aren't doing that on purpose, then you have the worst hand-eye coordination I have ever seen. Mocha's monster aura destroyed the clones as she glared at Tsukyun. You called me out here just for this. Mocha proceeded to grab Tsukyun and lift him as the boy held on to Naruto, partly out of fear of Mocha, causing her to heft all three onto the cliff. One would think even a ninja like Naruto would have been able to handle that. Tsukyun landed on his rump as Naruto, his feet, while Mizer landed in a crouch. Tsukyun chuckled slightly. Well, I really do appreciate you helping us. Mizer stood up as she gave Mocha a sideways glance. If you're looking for thanks forget about it. Mocha glared as she kicked her, only for her to kick Naruto, who flew with Mizer before flipping around to land in a crouch with the snow woman in his arms. You really need to chill Mocha. Mocha stared in surprise as the blonde stood defiantly against her. And what if I don't? Naruto smirked as he began to release a blue aura. I might not be allowed to kill the students, and you are my friend, so I can't use most offensive skills, including my strongest attacks, and I won't transform against you. Mocha frowned as she discovered where this was going. Naruto versus her in order for her to back off Mizer. So, low-level attacks and natural skills only. Mocha smiled, actually smiled, this was a trade, a spar in exchange for not kicking their asses for dragging her out for something stupid as Tsukyun did. Alright Naruto, let's see who is stronger, the ninja who got beat by three low-class monsters or an class vampire. Naruto grunted at the reminder of his failure as he set Mizer down. Mocha rushed in to close the distance she made between them from her kick as Naruto made a single-handed hand sign. Everyone was shocked, one being appalled at what Naruto did, for he sent something flying at Mocha after opening his mouth, only for the vampire to stop, step back and catch it. What Mocha caught however was Naruto's tongue, which had a strange orb of blue power at the end. Mocha's shock ended shortly after when she noticed the tongue was almost as hard as metal, only for it to soften as it began to slither and wrap around her, sort of grossing her out, though there were many other thoughts on how this technique could be used, she now was having trouble fighting off the tongue. Mizer, Yukari and Karumu all had bad thoughts swarming their heads, Tsukyun was grossed out, it's one thing when someone had their hands all over your crush, but what about when their tongue is wrapping around them? Naruto smirked as he walked closer to Mocha as his tongue bound her legs together and spoke normally, as if he wasn't using his tongue to bind her. This is the first time this plan worked. Normally the enemy would step aside and cut my tongue off. Mocha glared as she now wanted to do just that. What the hell? Naruto smiled as he went on. This is actually a combination technique. The first one allows me to cover the tip of my tongue in chakra and launch it as a ranged attack, followed by softening the chakra in order to make it more snake-like. The first one was inspired by the toads and their own tongues, while the second one, I figured out from learning the first and seeing a white pedophile use it, even though the first time I saw it, it was used on me. Mocha glared harder as her arms got bound to her torso. Mocha was blushing from both the implications and the fact she has a man's tongue literally all over her and she fell for an obviously simple tactic. The three other girls were still blushing like mad from the implications while Tsukyun was still a bit grossed out. Mocha glared more ferociously. Release me, now. Naruto smirked. So I win. Mocha's glare became chilly. You win. Naruto smiled before releasing her. 
Once Mocha was on the ground and Naruto's tongue was a ways back into his mouth, Mocha kicked the boy in between his legs, which caused him to clamp his jaw shut, causing him to bite his own tongue off. All four of the watchers cringed. Do something like that again, and I will be even less nice about my revenge. With that, Mocha went and put the Rosario back on, before innocent Mocha collapsed into Tsukun's arms. All three girls imagined the many things Naruto could do with his tongue, as they walked back to school, Yukari and Mizer, understanding the need for Naruto to be punished, neither minded helping him back. Tsukun was carrying Mocha on his back. The next day in whatever room they went to in the Anime. Tsukun and the girls were all wrapped in blankets as they sneezed. Naruto would chuckle every time one of them sneezed as they each glared at him. What? Not my fault I'm immune to most likely all known diseases. Jin chuckled as he decided to pick on the younger students. You all look like you went through the ringer. Nekanem decided to congratulate them on clearing Mizer's name, as said girl poked her head in the room. Good morning. Tsukun freaked about not noticing her, while Naruto smiled brightly at her. Good morning to you as well Mizer. Mizer smiled as she gazed at Naruto. Yukari noticed the ice girl stare at Naruto and now was cautious of the girl. Only for her to hear about Jin having pictures for the newspaper, which ended up only being photos of girls changing in the locker room. I should end it here, but on to the next day in math class. Naruto sat in his seat, almost completely ignoring the lesson in favor of sleeping with his eyes open, which he learned from listening to Iruka which stopped when the man would just guess when he slept and threw an eraser at him every now and then, sometimes being when he was awake. This teacher had no idea. Naruto suddenly fell forward as his back was bumped when everyone was laughing and insulting Tsukun for being stupid. The laughing and picking all halted when Naruto's head hit the desk with a thud, which caused him to let out a snore. Miss Kagam glared at the boy. Will someone wake Mr. Yuzumaki please? Tsukun sighed as he looked at Naruto. Well, after how hard Mocha kicked him, I can't really blame him for being tired. Miss Kagam heard him. And how exactly does getting kicked give him a reason to sleep in my class? Tsukun sighed as he answered. Well, I think he has been sleeping the whole day, and as for why, after the incident with Mizer, Mocha and he got into a small argument, which led to a small fight, in which he used his tongue in order to attack Mocha. Saizo, cause he's right there and has yet to do anything since he got put in his place before the fiction started, was the one to comment about that. So he licked her and she kicked him. What the hell? Sukyun chuckled nervously as he answered. Not quite, he actually extended his tongue, and when Mocha caught it to keep it from hitting her, he then used it to tie her up and hold her in midair, and Mocha got revenge by kicking him between the legs. Once again, the girls blushed, and some drooled at the prospect of such a skill, the teacher having some very dirty thoughts on such an ability. The men however, didn't have thoughts along those lines, but their respect for the blonde grew, and they saw it as his victory, even if he got kicked in the tenders. Mocha blushed and slid down in her chair as she was reminded of the little spar her inner half had with Naruto, remembering the phantom feel of his tongue wrapped tightly around her entire body. Naruto raised his head as he looked at the class, who were staring at him, in three different categories, the first being in respect, the second being embarrassed, and the third were staring at him like he was a piece of meat. Did I miss something? After class on the roof. Tsukun was begging Mocha for help as they were on the roof, Mocha was telling Tsukun how much she wanted to help him, only for Tsukun to take it out of context and allow his imagination to go to the gutter. As Mocha began to drink Tsukun's blood, Kurumu slammed the door to the roof open, stopping them and shouting about how Tsukun should go to her for help on studying. Tsukun was about to argue when Naruto moved the door, revealing a pouting Naruto and Mizer, the latter clinging to the former's back, slightly to his side, her head peeking out from behind his left shoulder, while a smiling Yukari was hanging from the blonde's neck. The three were surprised to see the three there, but calmed down when Yukari spoke up. I am already tutoring these two, if you all want to come join us you can. Tsukun looked about ready to protest when Mocha shouted happily. Alright, all of us studying together sounds like loads of fun. Tsukun sighed as he accepted his failure at spending time with Mocha alone. Another location jumped to the dorm room of Yukari. The gang was all seated as Yukari acted as a teacher. Kurumu sat at one end, with Tsukun next to her, while Mocha sat on his other side, Naruto next to her, and Mizer almost sitting on Naruto's lap, as she just kept writing Naruto's name in her notebook. Kurumu was the one to question Mizer. Not that I'm complaining about the lack of competition, but what happened to you liking Tsukun? Mizer looked at her and then shifted to looking back and forth between Tsukun and Naruto. Naruto for starters is a stronger man, he is also wiser, he also understands being lonely and knowing what it's like to have nothing, but still has the strength to smile and even shares that strength with those who need it. The girls looked at Naruto as he chuckled and rubbed the back of his neck, his cheeks gaining a pink tint to them. Yukari was the first to realize. So Naruto told you a bit about his past. Mizer smiled. 
He even told me about his powers. Yukari gasped as she whined. How come you haven't told me about your powers or past? Naruto raised a brow at the young girl. You never asked. Yukari pouted before throwing a book at him, which disappeared in a swirl, shocking everyone. I have more powers than just my transformations. My eyes also have power, and looking directly into my eyes can prove fatal. The first thing about my eyes is the fact that they allow me to not only mind control, but I can literally open a pathway to my own personal dimension, as well as drag you into an illusion of my own world, allowing me to torment your mind for a certain amount of time. I also have the power over gravity and some others, as well as the ability to see all around me and even through some objects. The girls each unconsciously covered their privates while they all looked on in awe. Naruto held his hand out as a book appeared in a swirl, the same book Yukari threw and caught it from its fall before handing it back to the young witch. Kurumu glared a bit. So, how often do you use your see though things ability? Naruto smirked. You're wearing yellow undergarments. Kurumu actually fumed as she jumped the blonde shouting pervert. Naruto chuckled as he held Kurumu off. I'm kidding, I saw your panties when you jumped Sukyun this morning and most girls wear matching sets, so I know the color of them. Kurumu calmed down slightly as she continued to glare. Naruto still smiled as he continued. I see through things is very limited, it's more like heat vision than x-ray. They all nodded before Mizer looked confused. I don't have body heat, so how did you find me when I ran away? Naruto chuckled. It's not exactly body heat I see. Every living thing has a source of power called chakra. It is this energy that our bodies use in order to function, humans are able to gain access to this energy through training. In the past it all depended on if the child wanted to be a ninja, but now it all is kept to certain families. Boundary beings are simply humans who have trained to use this energy, while monsters use a more powerful form of this energy called yakai. Sukyun continued to be confused while the girls kept listening, Yukari actually not knowing about all the specifics about the inner energy. She had assumed Kai and Kai, even used together, were just a diluted form of yakai. Naruto smiled at the interested looks he got, actually feeling embarrassed about actually teaching someone something. This energy travels throughout the entire body, like a second bloodstream. It even acts like blood in identifying people. My eyes are able to see the flow of this energy as it travels through the body. Sukyun, Kurumu and Mizer all appeared confused, Yukari was nodding, understanding where he was coming from, while Mocha asked. How does seeing this energy help exactly? Naruto chuckled. The energy itself is used by everyone whether they know it or not, it is used to provide the body with the energy it uses to run, so if the energy was tampered with, it could do some serious damage. The girls all nodded, Mocha and Yukari both understanding, Mizer understanding most of it, Kurumu understanding barely any, while Tsukyuun just chuckled as he understood less than Kurumu. Yukari decided to slap the table with a ruler to get everyone's attention. Alright, enough about energy, I have to tutor all of you so you get smarter about math, not for Naruto to tutor us about energy. The five in front of her all nodded as Naruto spoke. Yes, Ms. Sendo. Yukari blushes as she comments. Well I prefer Mrs. Sendo Yuzumaki, or just Mrs. Yuzumaki. Naruto chuckled as Mizer frowned, Kurumu, Mocha and Tsukyun all sighed. Yukari got back to teaching as the four who were behind listened and tried to learn, Mizer kept writing Naruto's name in her book, while Kurumu just got more confused, Naruto listened intently, while Tsukyun kept taking notes. Mocha was already ahead of them all. After everything was done and over with, Mizer asked a question about it, while Yukari stood shocked that everything she just explained went in one ear and out the other. Tsukyun was complimenting Mocha on her notes as she offered to write him up a set. Naruto noticed the two have one of their staring moments while he sat there looking at a blank notebook, glaring at it, only for it to light itself on fire with a black flame. Bastard. Yukari actually panicked as she tried to put it out, only for Naruto to glare, and the flames got absorbed by his eye, Mizer hid from the flame, behind Naruto. Later at the footlockers. Mocha and Tsukyun were leaving as Naruto noticed the math teacher walk up to them and tell them how the students goofed off instead of studied, while the two argued against her. Naruto also got a bit mad. He tried his hardest to learn what Yukari taught them. Seeing Miss Kagam put Tsukyun's face in her breasts was the straw that broke the camel's back. It is very annoying how you assume we learned absolutely nothing, though I failed to learn anything, I am pretty sure Tsukyun learned something, but it is still very rude to believe we learned nothing. Kagam smiled at the blonde. Well, since you admitted to not learning anything, you have proven my point about students leaving teaching to the professionals. Next day tutoring time we at. Sukyun sighed as he explained about the tutoring he was going to get from Ms. Kagam. Kurumu decided to tell them about what she learned about their math teacher. I heard from some of the older students about her methods, they say she goes way overboard. Sukyun sounded exasperated as he asked. Anything else we should know? 
Garumu looked a little more serious, cupping her breasts as she spoke. Yeah, there are two more problems I would like to point out. All the boys can't stop staring at her tits. Yukari smirked as she leaned towards Kurumu. Aw, is Kurumu mad that her huge hunkers don't stack up to the teachers? You're acting like a child, Kurumu. Kurumu squatted down as she pressed her hands against Yukari's chest. Actually, the only child around here I see is you, and the proof is your pancake flat chest. Yukari fraught back as she started to grope Kurumu. I prefer my flat chest to your balloons. Kurumu smirked over her shoulder at the girl. Yeah, mine are big, but what makes them really nice is how squeezable they are, unlike yours. Yukari gasped as she turned around and groped herself. Well my size doesn't matter, cause once I'm older, Naruto will take me, and we will live happily ever after. Kurumu looked slightly confused. Why not take you now? Yukari smirked. Cause Naruto doesn't enjoy taking advantage of cute little girls like myself and wants me to be a full 100% that he is my dream man before he takes me. That and it also gives me time to convince Mocha to join us. Naruto actually had a bit of a nose bleed when he thought about him with two said girls, only for Mizer to join in, causing him to bleed more. Yukari smiled. And Naruto agrees a full 100%. Naruto chuckled as he wiped his nose. I am also a bit scared due to not having full control over my physical strength. Who knew training to balance your spiritual side had no effect on your physical? My body naturally channels my energy to strengthen my form, so I gotta learn to hold back properly while well, she needs to strengthen her own body to keep herself from being broken in the wrong ways. Yukari and a fearful look as she and Mizer blushed while Kurumu nodded in understanding. Mocha mentioned something about summer break when Naruto heard Tsukun shout about passing math so he can do something with Mocha over the summer. Kurumu started to beg Tsukun to go to the beach with her so they could play with some balls. Yukari smiled as she clung to the right side of Naruto's waist. Speaking of summer vacation, we can go and have a romantic evening. Naruto turned to Mizer as she spoke. Snow cone as we watch the sunset. Naruto smiled. Why don't we have a picnic as the sun sets, with snow cones for dessert? Mizer hugged Naruto's left side as she smiled, Yukari actually smiled as well. Mizer gave her opinion. Naruto is so considerate over everyone, trying to make us all happy, as Tsukun panics and tries to run away, yet you ask why I chose Naruto over him. Tsukun cries as he turns away. Mizer gives him a disapproving look. Point proven. Naruto chuckles. Give the guy a break, I had 10,000 years to mature. Given time, our little frog here will turn into his princely self. Kurumu smiled as she hugged Tsukun's face into her breasts. Yeah, and he will be my prince. Tutoring room. Naruto walked the poor boy to the room before leaving him to suffer by disappearing when he turned to thank him for giving him company. Naruto had actually left a shadow clone to guide Tsukun while he left for some ramen, which ended up being dinner for three as he was found by Yukari, and he dragged Mizer from the shadows to keep her from being left out. Sometime next day. Naruto caught Tsukun walking away from Kurumu, who was dragging Yukari, who was tied up S&M style. Tsukun was muttering advanced algebra formulas as he ignored Kurumu asking him to tutor her. He then watched Rariko stop Mocha from giving the zombie Tsukun the notes she wrote for him and slapped her with them. Mocha sat on the floor crying when Naruto stepped up behind her. What is with that boy always falling for every trick monsters use? You would think that even a weak boundary being like him would have some sort of defense against some of them. Mocha looked at Naruto in shock. What makes you say that? Naruto sighed. He doesn't have yakai, only chakra, and he's here. Meaning he is a boundary being, but he wore the school uniform to hide it. I admit he has very little chakra, but he should have great control over it to at the very least hold his own against some of the weaker monsters. Mocha smiled at him, realizing he was skimming the truth so anyone who heard wouldn't think him human. So you can guess at what monster everyone is. Naruto returned her smile. Not really, my guesses are just that until I can learn about the type of power each class has, as well as the feel for each. For example, Mizer's energy is like staring into a blizzard, well Kurumu's is hard to describe, but it does get me feeling a little hot under the collar. Yours while unsealed feels like gravitational pressure, and when you're sealed it feels similar but slightly off. Everyone has different feels to their yakai or chakra, but each monster type will have familiar feels. Yukari's energy feels similar to my own or any other humans, however, hers also holds that extra spark that shows activity. Mocha gave the boy a smile as she turned to walk away. Naruto decided to get some answers. When Naruto made it to the room, Tsukun was already leaving, Miss Nekanam also walking by as he left, even more zombie-like. Miss Ruriko walked off five minutes after Tsukun left. Naruto glared at the woman as she smirked back. The next day, during tutoring. Naruto was talking with Mocha as they were preparing to leave for the day. 
I tried to see how she was tutoring him yesterday, but he was leaving when I got there, I assumed I spent more time than I thought explaining things to you. Mocha frowned, but before she could speak, they both heard Tsukun screaming, both rushing to help. Mocha slammed the door open as Ruriko was using some strange flower on the end of her tail to suck on Tsukun's head, the one on his shoulders. Naruto stared at the scene, also catching what the teacher was wearing. Wow, I am having flashbacks to another snake chick, but she has nothing on you. I believe you are called Alamia. You wouldn't happen to know of a chick named Anko, would you? Naruto caught Mocha as Ruriko slammed her tail into the pink-haired girl. Naruto also ignored the woman's rant about teacher-student bonds before he commented. I am so glad my teachers never had a bond like that with me, then again, they were all male, so they may have gotten in trouble if they tried anything like this. Mariko smirked at the two as Tsukyun gave her hand a kiss. This is the true strength of a bond between student and teacher, something neither of you would understand. Naruto actually glared at the woman. The bond between teacher and student is sacred, similar to a bond between parent and child. Mocha stared at Naruto as his anger rose, Mariko actually smiled. So you understand, but if you truly understood, then you would just leave and allow us to continue. Naruto glared as he reached into his sage cloak. The bond between teacher and student is not something for a weak-willed whore to use as an excuse to feed off young men. Mocha and Ruriko both stared in confusion as Naruto pulled out a rosario, which looked to be made of simple metal, with an orange gem. Mocha took advantage of Naruto distracting Ruriko in order to try and get Tsukun out of there. Naruto watched as Miss Kagam kept him in her sights, but slammed her tail into Mocha, causing her bag to fly from her hands, causing her notebooks to fly from it, which she grabbed one and destroyed it, sending the papers to fly around everywhere. Mariko threw several bottles of chemicals at Naruto, only for knives of ice to strike them down. Both the teacher and Naruto turned to find Mizer there, as the bottles fell and caused a blue firewall to appear. Naruto smirked as he tossed the rosario to Mocha. Put it on, if I did it correctly, something will happen. Mocha listened as she placed the second rosario on with her current one, only for nothing to happen, and for her to shout about it and pull the rosario off. Mizer hid behind Naruto from the fire, as Naruto himself grumbled about failing with the seal. Mocha ended up throwing the rosario and hitting Miss Kagam on her head, which caused the teacher to slam her tail flower into her and trap her against the wall. As Ruriko was about to shock Mocha during her rant about showing the teacher proper respect, Tsukyun grabbed the tail in order to stop the shock. Tsukyun now thanking Mocha for all her hard work she did for him as they both ignore the shouting Lamia behind Tsukyun. Tsukyun quickly removed Mocha's rosario as the teacher was about to give them extreme educational guidance. As Mocha became her inner vampire, she began to belittle the teacher. You call yourself an educational guide. As Ruriko was getting angrier, she yelled at Mocha. I am a teacher. Before she could continue, Mocha insulted her. No, you're just a poor excuse for one. All you are is a bull-minded narcissist. You always hammer the importance of learning to others, so allow me to return the favor and teach you your place. Mocha kicked her once before she was out. Mizer used her ice to stop the flames as Mocha ignored the Lamia and Tsukyun as she picked the strange orange rosario off the floor, taking it back to Naruto. And how exactly was this supposed to help? Naruto smirked as he took the rosario back. I will leave that as a surprise for after I see where I went wrong, and hopefully it will work. Mocha glared at him, still pissed about the whole tongue-tied experience. The day of the exams. Naruto watched as Tsukyun panicked over losing all the knowledge Miss Kagam had pumped into him. Naruto had cheated and used his shadow clones to read every book on math before dispelling. It also didn't hurt that he used the Sharingan ability, along with his own impressive photographic memory, to learn everything he could. Too bad they all dawdled and didn't learn enough to make him a genius. Later. Naruto, Kurumu, and Mizer each barely passed, Yukari getting a perfect score. Tsukyun with the help of Mocha, did better than Naruto, but still not super high up like her. Naruto was walking to the bus pretty early in the morning, though he ended up with Yukari hanging off his neck while Mizer sat on his right shoulder and Kurumu on his left. The girls on his shoulders were there because they got tired of walking as much as they were in the morning, after looking all over the place for Tsukyun and Mocha, they decided to just meet them at the bus stop. Yukari decided talking about Naruto's monster forms would be more entertaining than having a quiet stroll. Which of your forms is the strongest Naruto? Kurumu scoffed at the girl. His Kurama form would be the obvious. If he has nine monster forms and they each have a number of tails, then the strongest would be the one with the most tails of course. Naruto chuckled. Actually, each form has its own strength and weakness, nine might be stronger than one, but if they fought in the desert, one would have the advantage. Mizer decided it was her turn to ask. So what's the story behind that? Naruto readjusted his arms in order to keep the girls from falling, as well as his arms from falling asleep. 
years before my time, there was a tree that produced only a single fruit. I know the tree was taller than any before and after, and it was never truly measured, nor did anyone record how someone could reach the fruit or even know it was up there. However, there was a princess named Kagaya that did reach it, and as she ate it, she obtained the power of chakra and brought peace to the land, she even started her own family. The three girls, well fascinated with the story, they were also getting a little impatient waiting to hear what this had to do with his powers. She had two sons, both inheriting her power, the eldest, in an attempt to bring peace to the world and allow people to connect to each other in a spiritual way, shared his powers with everyone. Mizur and Kurumu just scoffed while Yukari spoke up. Bad idea if you ask me. Naruto only chuckled at their response. The man became known as the Sage of Six Paths, and he was able to keep things peaceful until his mother caught wind of what he did and sought to take back what she saw as hers, causing her two sons to do battle against her. After she took on a bestial form, the sage sealed her away within himself. Vizzer interrupted slightly here. Like you. Naruto nodded with a smile. Exactly, and he went on living his life, even having two sons of his own, one who inherited his powerful eyes and the other inherited his strong inner strength, these two would live through their lives and start their own clans, the Achiha and Senju. The sage, as he reached the last of his days, separated the beast from its powers, sealing the body within chunks of earth that he set in orbit and his brother's clan chose to guard, while he split the power into nine different parts, each taking the form of a mythical beast. Yukari looked skeptical. Are you saying the sage created the moon? Naruto smiled. Yes. Bizar smiled. And the humans of today say that a meteor crashed into Earth that caused it to form. One. Naruto actually laughed at that. Well, each of the nine Bijuu have their own powers, it mostly depends on how you use them, which makes it look like one is stronger than the others. Location also affects which is stronger. Yukari and Mizar both nodded, as Kurumu sighed. You know, I thought ninja were all about secrets, why are you so open about telling us about your powers? Naruto chuckled. What can anyone really do to me? I am over 10,000 years of age, I have 9 Bijuu in my head giving me advice, as well as the fact that I have literally as much power as the 3 big vampire dudes I have heard so much about. Yukari sighed. It's the 3 Dark Lords, and what do you mean you have as much power? When we met you said you bullied the headmaster to allow you to stay. Naruto smirked as he spoke. I showed him half of my power, which was diluted so I didn't transform, but it was enough that if me and him were to go all out, it would overload and destroy the little barrier he has around the school, revealing it to the world of humans, which would allow them to find it, which would cause them to destroy it with who knows what kind of weapons. Kurumu glared. But you had just woken up from a 10,000 year sleep, how did you know that the humans would destroy it? Naruto gave a sad smile. My family stayed guarding me till their last days, up to the point where they believed I would never awaken, while leaving journals of their times alive within a trunk they chained and sealed to my statue. From that trunk, I found that humans haven't changed their views about what they don't understand, as well as several photo albums of my family, as well as some of my descendants. Sensing the amount of yakai within the school, it was a simple thing to figure that this school is here to protect the monsters from humans. By showing him I have enough power to match, if not surpass him, he knew that a battle would reveal his school, so he allowed me to bully him. Though I do believe he knew I was bluffing, mostly because no one wants to fight an entire race, just because you couldn't resist proving you had bigger equipment than someone else. The girls giggled as they finally reached a bus stop, only to find Mocha and Tsukune so close together, causing the girls to berate them over leaving them to look for them so they could cuddle, though Kurumu was upset more about Tsukune getting closer to Mocha, while Yukari was upset about Mocha getting closer to Tsukune. Bizar was just upset they got them to look for them all morning, while Naruto chuckled at catching them in an embarrassing position. Betting on the bus for their trip, Naruto found out Jin had makeup classes, and Kurumu ditched her classes. The trip to the human world was Naruto's first, so everyone expected him to get slightly excited, but when they saw Tsukune get as excited if not more so than Naruto, they all began questioning him. Naruto laughed at their excuses. Thinking about it, considering me and Yukari are the only other boundary beings there, I assume you were treated well with your family, right Tsukune? Everyone stared at Naruto, Kurumu voicing their question. What do you mean Naruto? Naruto chuckled. Because I spend so much time around you, and with as well as my sensing abilities are, I can tell if a monster is a vampire, succubus, or a snow woman. I can also tell that Tsukune is a very low-level ninja, due to his genin level reserves. Tsukune looked at Naruto confused, while the girls looked at Tsukune confused. Naruto chuckled. At first I figured he was hiding it, until I noticed he has barely any worthwhile training, his chakra level to age ratio sucks, though I am hardly able to comment, being a Jinchuriki means I mostly started out with Jounin level reserves, and by time I was taking a test to be Chunin, I had cage levels. 
Bukhari smirked. So that's why you are so good at hiding, you are just a weaker boundary being than me. Considering Naruto commented on my high chun and level chakra before saying it was impressive for my age. Sukyun felt slightly confused about being both saved and insulted at the same time, though he caught Naruto smirking at him, making him think Naruto knew the truth. Naruto moved towards Mocha as he grabbed her Rosario, before placing the same one he tossed her when they faced their evil math teacher on the same chain. The effect was instant as Naruto ended up holding two Rosarios that were hanging from two different Mochas, both wearing the same clothes. Silver-haired Mocha glared at Naruto as she slapped his hand away. What exactly do you think you're doing? Naruto smiled. I figured that instead of calling you out to deal with easy situations, you might enjoy hanging with us on vacation. The Rosario seal I used was a pain to create, it actually causes the current Rosario on Pmoka to multiply and fuse with mine, causing the Rosarios to use your sealed Yakai to create a double for you. You do have to be careful though, because you are actually weakened with a majority of your Yakai being used to create a solid body for you. I got the idea from the Biju. Both Mokas were as confused as everyone else. Smoka decided to ask. How do I return to my full power, and what's with calling her Pmoka? Naruto chuckled. Well, I figured that while you both are together, we could just add a P to her name, and S to yours. But in order to get you back to full strength, Iertsukun will have to remove one of your Rosarios. Everyone marveled at the now reddish orange color of the Rosario, as Smoka sat with Naruto, and Mocha went back to Tsukun. Smoka decided to bring up the math teacher incident. So how would this help against that Lamia? Naruto chuckled. I figured the split would have confused the teacher enough I could have removed the Rosario from one of you and left you with your full power. Mocha smirked. Clever, though it did fail. Naruto pouted slightly. Well, at first I tried to give you your full power, leaving Mocha with as little as possible, considering she isn't battle suited like you, but I figured the one that used your yakai to form a body would be good enough for vacation. You still have access to all of your yakai and your strength, but if you use too much yakai you'll shrink. Smoka blinked at him. Would the same happen to my other self? Naruto chuckled. No, if she uses it you'll still shrink. You both have the same pool of yakai, you are just using it for a body. The more you have the longer it takes to notice you shrinking. But if either of you have your Rosario removed then you will go back to Pmoka and not have to worry about shrinking anymore. The girls all chuckled at Smoka's dilemma, while Pmoka actually felt bad about how she could cause problems for her other half with this newfound freedom, while Tsukun listened and actually paid attention so he would know what would happen, only to actually chuckle at the implications about a short Mocha. At the beach. Naruto ended up being dragged around in the water with Mizur and Yukari almost as soon as they got there. Kurumu shouted for Tsukun to join her while she played in the water as well. Naruto chuckled as a group of girls commented about how good the handsome young blonde man was to his little sister as she hung off his back. As Tsukun was telling Mocha he couldn't have fun without her and how he wanted to stay on land with them, Mocha and Tsukun were having their dazzling stare, which sort of reminded Naruto of the youthful embraces of Guy and Lee's. Kurumu shouted about how Mocha was trying to suck Tsukun's blood as Naruto walked out of the water, strangely enough, both girls he was hanging out with were hanging off him. Several people looked at Naruto strangely, several girls commenting on the strength and stamina he must have, while most guys were simply jealous. Naruto sat down next to Smoka as Yukari ended up on her knees behind him, arms still wrapped around his neck, while Mizer ended up sitting next to him as she leaned into his muscular torso. Alright Smoka, what do you want to do with your newfound freedom? I already spent nearly an hour with these two, so I figured it's your turn to hang with me, considering I was the one who dragged you out of the seal for some freedom, I should at the very least spend time with you. The girls all stared at Naruto for a few seconds, Tsukun actually looking curious and a bit frustrated. How is it Naruto can be so calm about this? Neither Mocha can enter water because of their vampire blood, yet you just up and left them. How can you just leave one of your friends by themselves like that Naruto? Naruto actually gained his cold rippled glare for a few seconds at Tsukun's words before he noticed Tsukun was honestly completely worried about leaving either Mocha alone on the beach as they all went to have fun in the water. Well, to begin I spent time with the two on my back doing something they wanted to do and after we have spent a decent amount of time doing that, we decided to come back to dry land and join up with Mocha after she finished sunbathing and do something fun she desires to do for a bit. Tsukun, whether you want to date Kurumu or not, she is still your friend and you should at the very least spend some amount of time with her or at least tell her you don't want to be with her and allow her to find someone who will treat her properly. Tsukun began feeling horrible as Kurumu cried, asking him if he hated her. What is with the cruel answer? Naruto frowned at the boy. Think about how you phrase a question before asking it. I would never abandon anyone. Tsukun looked down. 
I'm sorry, it's just that, leaving Mocha alone on land makes me feel extremely bad. I already feel horrible for when I went to the swimming club. I got Mocha hurt. Smoka glared slightly at Tsukun. You're completely useless. Naruto on the other hand is a mature and powerful male. You should listen to his words more than you listen to your own thoughts. Naruto knows that I and my other self are basically stuck on land and I could have hung out with her while you splashed in the water. But since you're a stupid lovesick puppy, I had to sit here and listen to you whine about how you couldn't leave Mocha behind for nearly an hour. And I am starting to form a headache. Tsukun sweat dropped. Naruto reached over as his hand began glowing blue as he placed it upon her forehead, before placing his other blue glowing hand on her rosario, which was hanging between her breasts. Well, the seal isn't malfunctioning, so why isn't your yakai healing factor kicking in? Mocha glared at the blonde as she gained a tiny bit of pink on her cheeks. I was saying he was irritating me. Why do you take every chance there is to place a part of you on me? First your tongue now your hands, what's next? Ukari and Mizer both giggled at the whole argument. Kurumu looked curiously at the two. What's up with you two? Mocha comments on the guy you both want doing dirty things to her, yet neither of you are fighting for him. Ukari chuckled as she rubbed the back of her head. Well, one day after school, while you and Mocha were off jazzing Tsukun. I and Mizer got into a fight over Naruto, almost to the point of actual fighting. Mizer began to smile as she continued. Naruto popped up between us and stopped it. He was stern and demanding, though we started arguing again, and I pulled out some ice knives, while Yukari pulled out her wand, and Naruto once again came up with a solution. Yukari giggled as she took over again. Naruto challenged us to a two-on-one fight, me and Mizer against him, the first of us to hit him, would be able to make one demand of him, and he promised that he would go through with it no matter what, even if it involved taking Mocha to a room and having his way with both me and her. Mizer pouted as she started speaking. But both of us ended up completely exhausted, while Naruto still had energy to burn, his stamina is amazing. I will even admit to possibly needing Mocha's help to wear him down. He also has a technique called Shadow Clone, which allows him to multiply himself. Meaning he could please us all at once. Kurumu actually looked shocked at that, both Mocha's first thought went to their spar with a blonde, while Tsukun just paled at what the girls were implying. Naruto chuckled as the girls got into a big conversation argument over him and Tsukun when Tsukun noticed sunflowers up on a hill. Tsukun had managed to get the girls and Naruto to check out the hill, which they all found quite peaceful. While everyone was commenting on the serene atmosphere, Yukari overheard some people talking about a witch kidnapping people. You hear that? Looks like your relatives kidnap people up here. Yukari glared at her, but before she could say anything, Naruto began to speak. Considering they said they were going to destroy the landscape here for construction, I side with the witch. Tsukun looked at Naruto with a frown. Why would you agree with kidnapping people? Naruto looked seriously at Tsukun, and for the first time, Tsukun noticed something within his eyes. Naruto actually looked like one of those wise old men he read in books or watched in television. This place has so much natural energy, it's completely peaceful, and it reminds me of home. The girls all watched as Naruto began to barely move, almost as if he were in slow motion, as his eyelids turned red, almost as if he had put on red eyeliner, while his eyes turned yellow with horizontal slits. This place makes connecting with nature so easy, almost easy as it was on Mount Mayaboku. The girls and Tsukun watched as Naruto became more and more lax. Tsukun was the one who broke the calm silence. Well, as much as being able to connect with nature is good, one shouldn't harm others just to get their way. I don't know, nor will I pretend to understand what it was like in your time. But if this is a witch doing these kidnappings, then she is pushing people to fear monsters more, and that is the ultimate wish for all monsters isn't it? Naruto turned to Tsukun with a smile. Releasing his connection with nature. You have been understanding my words as we have spoken Tsukun, and you understand more than you admit, and I will admit that you are right. If a witch is behind this then she is going about it all wrong. One should look for the path that leads to the least amount of harm being done. Tsukun smiled as he spoke up. And you said it yourself, that true peace can only be reached through understanding and forgiveness, by ending the cycle of hate you mentioned. Naruto nodded as he answered. Yes, and you came to that conclusion after I told you about the cycle of hate. Which is why I began to explain the art of ninjutsu to you, and began to help you. The girls were all pretty confused now. Mizer speaking up. So that is what you guys talk about when you're alone. Naruto and Tsukun both smiled towards them, Tsukun answering. I go and talk with Naruto when we turn in for the night, but he always kick me out before it gets too late for you to wake up in time for class. Mizer actually blushed as each of the girls looked at her. Naruto chuckled. You do realize that I didn't mention her sneaking into my room at night in front of the other girls for a reason Tsukun. Tsukun chuckled sheepishly. Ukari was the most vocal about the issue. 
So you let her sneak in and sleep with you, but you don't let me. Burrito smiled. I never said you couldn't sneak in and join me in bed. I just refuse to screw your brains out. The group laughed about the antics of the girls as they walked from the field of flowers. Only two noticing the eyes that saw them. Later on, at the campsite they set up. Yukari was trying to find something to make herself helpful, only to be treated like a kid by everyone, Tsukyung telling her the cooler was too heavy for her, Mocha not wanting her to cut herself on the knife, Mizer not wanting her to get in the way. Smoka was lazing about, enjoying her new freedom, though would occasionally complain about the lack of presence that she would normally have. Yukari walked off, not seeing Naruto anywhere to ask if he needed help. Upon sitting on the log, Yukari felt someone sit next to her and wrap his arm around her. Yukari found herself a bit upset that Naruto would only now come out of hiding, instead of earlier to defend her, when everyone kept treating her like a simple child. Naruto smiled warmly as Yukari spoke heatedly at him. So you choose to come and comfort me instead of defend me this time? And here we are all talking about how you are better than Tsukune because you defend and mediate rather than cower. Naruto chuckled. But you are a child. Yukari looked about ready to cry as Naruto continued. You may have a mind that can run circles around even the teachers, but physically, you are only a child. Yukari turned to Naruto, seeing him smiling reassuringly at her. If it gets on your nerves that badly, then why not wait for the others to fall asleep and sneak into my sleeping bag tonight, as I am sure Mizer will most likely do. My body heat is enough to protect you from the cold she produces. Yukari blinked, sighing as she replied to him. But I am only twelve. I am pretty sure you prefer Mizer rubbing her body on you rather than me with mine. Naruto chuckled. Mizer has her figure, and it does feel nice. Yukari sighed as she looked down in disappointment. Naruto raised her chin to face him once more. But as you said, you're twelve, you will grow, and you will be just as beautiful as the other girls. Your mind is growing faster than your body, maybe you should let your mind have a rest while your body catches up. Naruto smiled as he kissed her forehead, the same way Tsunade had him when he was being stubborn about things. Of course, his was being a brat and not wanting to accept things, and sharing a moment like that was like having a mother for him. And in this case, he was comforting his friend that had a crush on him about her size and age issues. He just hoped it worked with her like it did with him. Yukari was about to say something before she sensed a magic spark up on the hill with the sunflower field. Yukari stood and went to check it out, as Naruto followed her, though he did so silently, as if he was backing her up, rather than stopping her. Yukari had reached the field and decided to ask. So, why didn't you ask me about where I was going? Naruto spoke up from right beside her. Because I trust you, and if you rushed up here, then I believe you sense something and I have faith in your skills. There are more to people than their physical strength or body shape. I have great faith in your intelligence and skill, and assume that if you sensed something, then I would back you up. Even though I sense nothing, I'm not a good sensor, unless I'm using sage mode. Yukari smiled at her crush's faith in her, and even shed a tear at hearing him admit she could do something he couldn't. Naruto became serious as he turned around. Though I can hear when people try to sneak up on me better than most. Yukari looked and found a tall brunette standing under a tree. Naruto speaking first. You sensed her first Yukari, so this is your show. What's the plan? Yukari smiled more at the blonde as she looked at the girl. As said girl listened to the blonde as well. The mystery girl was the one to break the silence. I heard the succubus call you a witch, is that true? Yukari nodded her head as she watched the girl cautiously, as the woman smiled. I never thought I would run into another witch out here. Both witches held their wands in plain view, as Naruto stood closer to Yukari, placing his hand on the shoulder opposite him, showing his support. The woman's eyes turned to the blonde. And, I heard your words as well, how you defended my actions against the humans who came to harm this field. I was hoping we could be friends, if that's not too much to ask. Yukari looked confused, before repeating the question, as the woman smiled and ran forward to hug Yukari. Yes, I'm so happy to have a new friend. My name is Ruby. Naruto smiled as Ruby hugged Yukari tightly, both blushing, Yukari more so than Ruby. Friendships are the greatest method to harmony. Naruto hugged them both as Ruby's blush became a deeper red as she felt his arms around her. Yukari actually giggled as Naruto picked them both up and spun around with them. Soon, all three of them sat along the hillside, looking across the field of flowers as Ruby and Yukari talked about their witchcraft a bit. Naruto had mentioned a little more about his ninjutsu, Ruby warming up slightly towards him with their connection as fellow boundary beings, though she did comment about how the bond wasn't as strong as her kinship of witches that she shared with Yukari, as she cuddled with the young girl. And Tsukune came around and announced his presence, which caused Ruby to become angry and attacked Tsukune. Naruto stood back during this confrontation, as Yukari proved she was powerful in her own right and defended them with her flying cards. Ruby stared at Yukari as the little girl stood in her way. 
Tsukyu may be a spineless wimp, but he is still my friend. Ruby looked hurt as she saw both her new friends standing against her. I shall destroy all humans that is my goal. They have made their plans to destroy my home, so I shall kill them all. Why are you against me when we share kinship? Yukari held her wand firmly as she prepared to defend herself. Ruby glared at the group before her as she commanded more of her plants to attack, but she only bound Yukari, who was lifted in the air. Naruto stood there calmly, as the vines failed to move him, and several of the plants failed to bite him. Why does the phrase, I have seen enough hentai to know where this is going keep popping into my head? Sukyun began to panic worse as he heard Naruto's words. Yukari remembering the words of her friends as they all called her a child, though hearing Naruto's comment, did spark a bit of fear, not wanting her first time to be with someone other than said blonde, let alone with a plant. Yukari pulled more power from within as she used a larger amount of her cards to destroy the vines. The rest of the group all showed up in time to see Yukari settling down after her attack, though they also noticed Naruto ripping vines off him and Tsukyun panting on the ground with a look of relief. Naruto patted Yukari on her head as he complimented her on her victory. As she turned to Ruby, while Kurumu and Mizer came to check on her, Mocha checking Tsukyun while Smoka stood next to him. I am sorry Ruby, but I don't want to join you because I have friends that need me, who are important to me. Leaving them would be like removing their brains, considering they need my knowledge, or they would flunk everything. Ruby looked disappointed as Yukari ignored Kurumu's offer for a ride back to camp. Naruto and Smoka following their lead. Mocha was nearly kissing Tsukyun, and as Smoka was about to stop them from doing dirty things with her body. Tsukyun was stabbed from behind by the plants. Ruby looked like she had gone crazy as she spoke. Yukari is coming with me. There is nothing stronger than the kinship between witches, and if there is. I will destroy it. Mocha watched as Tsukyun fell into a pool of his own blood. Before her yakai burst forward, causing Smoka to shrink as her hair became silver, before Smoka had shrunk to nothing, leaving the rosario Naruto had made. Garumu was the next to release her power, raising it further than she had ever done before. Mizur and Yukari, well upset and released their power enough to show them being pissed, didn't manage to match Mocha or Kurumu. Naruto, however, stayed silent. His hair shadowing his eyes, before he raised them to look Ruby in her own, revealing the eyes of Sage Mode. Okay, so I don't believe I talked enough with this chapter. Actually, this is just an update dump for this chapter, if you are reading this after my story claimed an update, I replaced the previous author note chapter with a new one and posted this one. If you all would be willing to read on, what is fully different with this chapter is explanations. I am going to leave my previous notes in here at the end, so I don't have to rework everything, but I figured I would put the new stuff first, so you all know there is something new to read here. I should probably explain the Pat Rion a bit. I make the posts over there public posts, so you should be able to go over there and give feedback on whatever they are without paying, and if you do not possess an account and do not want to make one, you are free to come here and send your opinion in a PM. There will be things that you get for paying, such as the shiny Pokemon. They will mostly be from my own Masuda method shiny hunting, where they will have 5 best IVs and maybe their hidden ability, I do have some shiny Cufant with its ha, a couple egg moves, and adamant nature. So as I said, you can come over to Pat Rion and view my posts and comment on them for easy interaction with me. Free to share ideas and opinions and give me feedback on ideas that I want to post here to fan fiction, but you do get stuff if you join as a patron. Not a lot for now, just a shiny Pokemon with amazing stats, Pokemon Sword and Shield. But I would be open to suggestions for what I could do to entice my fans to join as patrons if you have any. Older note. Alright, I have some things I need to talk about. This chapter is an author note that I am posting to all of my fictions. Even the complete ones. I want to tell you all about an issue I have come up against. Money. Not too long ago, I lost my job. And recently I decided to reach out to you guys on Pat Rion. And just within the past week or so, my mother has lost her last source of income. So I decided to reach out one more time on Pat Rion before returning to try and get a job in retail. I hate retail, but it's all I can do with how the collage in my area screwed me over. The reason as to why I felt the need to inform you all about this in such a manner is because while I recently have been working on new fictions and even reworking and fixing up my older fictions, mostly grammar and plot holes I missed. I won't be able to really continue them. The reason I stopped writing in the first place is because of all the jokes about fearing the comment section on YouTube videos. I had gained a fear of reading your reviews before I even read them. Then I read them, and about 95% of you all have said you love my work. The last 5% either hate or baffle me. And before you all say anything, I used Google Translate on the reviews that are in other languages. So, I figured I would reach out one more time in hopes that I will get a chance to do something I love as a job. Pat Rion Suprema Banded. 
If you all want, I figured I would do some rather random stuff that honestly has nothing to do with this side over there. Pokemon sharing is what I am referring to it as. I have at the moment four boxes of shiny Pokemon. I have the list, which I will be updating periodically on Patreon, and if you join as a patron, you can pick one, and I will set up a time and code for me to give it to you. You would be able to basically get a shiny a month from me. I guess that could count as me selling shiny competitively bred Pokemon. I also have every Pokemon, so if you find yourself just wanting a Pokemon without it being shiny, I can send an all best one out to you without it counting against your shiny request. So, any Pokemon all best and one shiny a month if you become a patron. But as I said, if Patreon doesn't work out, I gotta get a job, retail is literally all I'm good for, so I would be slowed down with my chapters, if not outright silenced as I was before. Coming home each night after costumers have drained me of my will and I just collapse into my bed. I sleep a lot more when I work. I have 959 reviews spread across 105 chapters, and I rarely see a negative opinion. I admit there are some doubles, and even some guests. I also admit that some are rather old, dating back 7 to 11 years. But if even one tenth of those reviews are willing to help me out, I would be able to count this as a job. So yeah, if enough people are willing to help, I would be able to continue working on each of these stories. And I may even rework my rightful heir story so I can continue it. Two of the Ock characters are not mine from there, so any work I put into it will require an overhaul to remove Carthango and Pyro. The second being easier than the first. Carthango actually worked with me in writing up his Ock. So since he no longer wants to or has the time to with him having his own family to worry about, he has to go. I don't want it to sound too much like I'm begging screw trying to sugarcoat this for me. That is basically what this is. I am holding up a sign that says we'll write for cash at this point. I am getting a little desperate because I hate retail and those are the only jobs available in my area. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.